Well, how cool was that? Flower of Scotland sung a cappella by 60 odd thousand Scotland fans. And we are moments away. England strip off their white tracksuits. Scotland do the same with their dark blue. Minutes away from the 130th edition of rugby's oldest fixture, the Cal Cutter Cup. And Chris Ashton on the touchline. Hello. Come in, Ashy. Turn around, give us a wave. How's it all down there? Yeah, it's nice. It's intense down here. The pressure's it's on the knife edge, you know. You can hear it all. The pressure is building, all ready to go. Kick off, flying into it. You can see how emotional England are. Guys, it's good. It's a good atmosphere down here. And how is it different down there to say being 20, 30 rows back where we are? You're in it. You can see that. I'm like the, what, the lads now walking past me. The lads on the bench, Scottish team boys. It's tense. It's tense. I think everyone just wants to. There's been a lot of talk about this game for the past two weeks, hasn't there? It's a big build-up. It's the middle of the tournament. There's a lot on it for both teams. Yeah, what an occasion. Great stuff. Chris Ashton, former England winger. English rugby's greatest ever try scorer with us on five sports extra. And we are ready to go. Scotland having one more huddle as the, the fans in fine voice, moments away from kickoff. England just passed the ball back and forth. George Furback, Henry Slade, Elliot Daly getting the hands on the ball. The referee, by the way, is Andrew Brace, assisted by Chris Bus Busby and Owen Cross. Marius Jonker, the South African, is in the TMO chair. England will play from left to right. They will kick off. Scotland will receive the ball playing from right to left. Scotland in their iconic blue strips, blue tops, blue shorts and white socks with a blue trim. England have their white shorts, their white tops and their blue socks with a white trim. George Ford, all 94 caps, one of... Many Englishmen herring towards that century of caps. Danny Kerr wins 99 today. Joe Marler wins 91 when he comes on. And we still just wait for the go-ahead. Five seconds, the countdown. Listen to the crowd. As Andrew Brace says to George Ford, let's go to work. And he pops it up into the Murrayfield sky. Brilliantly taken coming forward by the returning Blair Kinghorn. And Scotland are away. Nice offload. That was two of Pilotto, I think, Herring almost up to halfway. White now. Out the back, it comes Russell. Lovely ball. They're almost on the outside here, Scotland. But Kinghall's pass gets away. Good start. Scotland, Johnny Beater, but England had the line out in a nice attacking position, 40 out. The worrying part for England there is just how easily they got outside the Blitz defence. England, if they're going to stifle Scotland, they need to get the line speed right and they need to get the spot tackles bang on. But a great start for Scotland. We'll go through the two lineups in a moment. When we get a stoppage, it's Jamie George on the money. Chesham, lovely drill. Danny Kerr, George Ford out to Henry Slade, who's deep. Furback, they're running it round the halfway line. Is that Ben Earl out in the wide channel? Yes, using his ball carrying back to Ford. This looks a tactic from England, going cross-field, trying to isolate Ben White. Tommy Freeman's all over that. Could have taken it. He did en end up getting it back in English possession. It was taken on by Sam Underhill, and then it goes out of play. But a fascinating tactical start, Matt Dawson, as England kind of pass it deep, keep it alive, and then cross-field back. Well, I think both sides have gone exactly how they would have ideally practiced th throughout the week Scotland with an, yeah, good, an early that. quick shift Five. to the left to beat the blitz England getting Ben Earl in that outside channel trying to challenge the, the Scottish outside centre uh, and then a cross field kick Sack to get on top of Ben White so all are going according to plan so far I think for both sides Rory Dodge from the line out peel it's set up okay. by the Scots there about oh, 10 metres outside their own 22. Maratoje rushing up and forcing a mistake from the Scots. And this is encouraging for England because they're in Scottish territory on the 22. Care. Ellis Genge out the back. George Ford might have numbers here. Ollie Lawrence short. But Andrew Brace was happy. Care. Good lightning fast ball for England who attack on the far side. Tommy Freeman's got his hands on the ball from the right wing over to the left touchline. Nil nil. Two minutes gone. BBC Sounds and Five Sports Extras. George Ford on the 22. Good carry, Ollie Chesham. Good English start. They're in Scottish territory. Care look right. He went left. Who's going to pick it up? Well, Slade tried to flip it away, but the ball has gone four, to ground. Four. And we will, Johnny B, to get our first scrum of the match over on the far side on the Scottish 22 line. But we've just seen the first example of why a blitz defence is so effective. Mara told you there has come okay, out go. to in on Schumann and he's given him no time and he's forced that turnover that's given England the cheap ball outside 22 they haven't been able to convert but blitz defence it's so hard when you're a ball carrier and you have that coming up in your face with that line speed 
great start defensively for Toji. Del delicious opportunity for England there, switching down the short side again in the pre-match warm-up. England attacking short sides, going down the 15 metres to touchline channel. On occasion, Danny Kerr couldn't quite connect with Henry Slade, but it's an obvious tactic. First scrum, let's have a look. As always, it takes about a minute of ball in play for the scrum to set, and it's going to be reset. And I tell you what, watching back England-Wales was painful the amount of times the scrum takes. And I know the referees have got to focus on the safety and all the structures. Johnny, you've been in there, you've been in the engine room. But, you know, it was two minutes when the scrum formed. Now we're three and a half minutes as Scotland prepare to feed the scrum inside their own 22. Scotland nil, England nil in the early stages on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Three and a half minutes gone, Scotland nil, England nil, bright enterprising start, Scotland almost got away, England almost got away, Scotland now feeding the scrum inside their own 22. Nil nil after almost four in. Just updating our Radio 5 live listeners, Ian Dennis, with the closing stages from the three o'clock. We'll be over on Five Live straight after the end of the, the football at Old Trafford, Man U, Fulham. But either on Sports Extra or on Five Live, you will not miss a kick, a pass or anything from the 130th Calcutta Cup. And Johnny Beattie talking about the scrum. It's taking an age, but now it's going to be a free kick to England and they've chosen to, 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 to put the ball into the scrum themselves. That's another free shot for England again. It's Xander Fagerson that's pinged for an early engagement. So free kick against them. England have opted to go for the scrum and another really nice opportunity. The entirety of the right-hand side of the field to attack from. What can England conjure? But they need to get a solid scrum here, Matt Dawson. It is a good platform. No, oh, it's tremendous. It, it, it could not be any better. What have you got in your locker, England? You've practiced this to eternity on the on the blackboard, on the field. What have you got? Ben Earl peels around the corner. Danny Cares in the pocket. Now here's four. This is good from England. Daly's through. Lovely ball. Great English try. How good is that? And it's George Furbank. The man brought into the starting 15 and it's paid off straight away. What a move from England, how they use that scrum brilliantly. And they're on the board at Murrayfield. Yeah, now what a shot in the arm that's going to be for this England side. Haven't seen that for an eternity. First phase going through the hands, runners all over the place. Passing sharp to the line, pull back from Danny Kerr was neat. George Ford then just decided to pick the right player to Elliot Daly, who popped it into George Furbank. As you mentioned, Chris, made it look very, very easy. I'm not sure Scotland are going to be happy in defence. Well, they won't be happy initially because they've coughed up possession, haven't they? They allowed England a free strike inside their 22 by not getting their scrum set properly. And again, you have to admire, that is top-class finishing and creation by this England pack. The delay on the pass by Danny Kerr, taking the ball to the game line, asking questions and picking the right runner. Beautiful execution. Oh, and what a way to settle your nerves, George Furbank. Brought into the side. He's had a fitful England career to date. Six caps over the course of four years. But he started cap number seven with a bang. England on the board. They lead by five. Four to make it seven. Bangs it through. Great kick, George Ford. Right. Chris Ashton on the touchline. You'd have enjoyed that one, Ashy. Yeah, it was all made by Elliot Daly, the try. This is Scotland all over the place. Duan van der Merwe, when you're on the wing defended, you know your man is either the blind side winger or the 15. You cannot just leave the blind side winger to hit a hole. There's a great hole from Elliot Daly and George Verbank gets his try when he's back in the team Scotland nil, England seven seven very captivating oh. minutes but oh, that long scrum as Kerr clears his lines and now Scotland oh, they thought they were going to go quickly they did that in this fixture two years ago went quickly scored from almost exactly that blade of grass 40 out oh. in English territory Scotland but they're going to have Scotland the line out Oh, and there's an HIA has been called. It's been coming through these smart gum shields. When there's been a certain force, the, um, the, the, the message comes on that a player needs to go off. So Xander just Fagerson, wait, who wait. is so important, Johnny Beattie, to this Scotland side, with the backup not as strong, ready. he's coming ready. off for a, for a head injury assessment as they wait for the line out. He is absolutely central. And someday we probably should have highlighted before kickoff. He's expected to get through the majority of this game. So to lose somebody of his stature at this early time, 
could be very telling. The good news is, Johnny, that even if we miss something in the build-up, we have done so many podcasts this week that we end up discussing it somewhere. It was a big point Tom English made on our pod on, let's say, Friday morning about the Scottish front row. It looks super strong, 1, 2 and 3, but 16, 17 and 18 maybe doesn't quite have the same look. But a big moment for Elliot Miller-Mills, the 31-year-old from Northampton, who is on for Ferguson. Temporarily, maybe permanently, we will see. As Scotland prepared to throw into the line out, they are 40 metres out. They're on the board. What a try it was as well. Set piece move from a scrum. Beautiful handling. George Furbank ghosting in for his first test try. George Ford banged over the conversion. England leads 7 0 after 7. And England are full of beans here, Matt Dawson. Scotland attacking from the line out, forcing the mistake. England scrum in the middle of the park. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that uh, Scotland trying to pick up the okay, pace go, fellas, against this blitz at the moment is necessarily the right thing to do they maybe just need to mix okay, it up a little balance. bit okay, no, you just come on, just bring in the kicking game bring in a driving game just yeah if i was in that scotland really side right right now i would be screaming at the officials to be watching england offside at the rucks because they are so offside but because they're doing it all together it looks like they're onside you've got to play some mind games scotland with the officials here otherwise England are just going to lap it up because they're coming out at a rate of knots. Eight minutes gone, Scotland nil, England seven. A George Furbank try and that scrum has gone to ground. England win the scrum penalty. So, Johnny, it was a free kick a moment ago. Now they get the long arm and it's all going England's way in the opening stages of the Calcutta Cup. It is, that's Miller Merles right on the field. He's just been pinged and again, he's lost his bind against Ellis Genge on that loose head side. Not the greatest start for Scotland, has to be said. The blitz defence, two important turnovers. George Ford with the last one, another scrum penalty. These things are starting to add up now for Scotland. They haven't had their hands on the ball. It's all England. That uh, that England try had a had a sniff of Northampton Saints about it, mm. didn't it? I mean, I know it was finished off, but you, you, you just feel that maybe the the rest of the England backline are thinking and tapping into the way that Northampton have been playing with with Freeman and Furbank Mitchell as well. It was slick. Oh, goodness me. Fulham have got a late winner at Old Trafford. So Ian Dennis will be pissy over on Five Live. We'll be joining Five Live very, very shortly. Uninterrupted here on Sports Extra up until around about 25 past. So Sports Extra now, Five Live soon as England attack. And for all the slickness of their try, that was not as slick. They got in each other's way on what was quite a basic little pop ball from Slade to Earl. And now Scotland have the scrum in between the 10 metre line and the 22 in their own half. And a bit of encouragement from the Scottish crowd. Again, the ball just taken to the line. Oh, just lost in transition. Hits the back arm of Ben Earl. He didn't really. Slade, bless him, he didn't have an option there, did he? I mean, it, it, but I think but the, the line that Ben Earl ran, he could only have been blocking or getting the ball. Just a bit too tight. So yeah. again, it's just that cohesion starting to come together. The first phase for the try, exceptional. That one, they just get their timing wrong and they've given Scotland the ball back. And does that give this side a bit of respite? Can they clear their lines? Can they get into English territory? It's been a difficult opening period for the Scottish uh, side. And you guys would know as well as anyone. Oh, Scotland win the free kick. That's big for the Scotland scrum because even at this early stage, it was under pressure. But when you come to to an away ground, especially one that is, that is, in, is intimidating as Murrayfield these days, it's exactly what you've got to do because the crowd just have been slightly subdued. Scotland need to give this crowd something to get them back at the decibel level they were just before the game. Russell kicks downfield, nicely gathered Freeman, passes to clubmate Furbank. He clears down the throat of Russell. Russell flips it inside of his left to Blair Kinghorn. He's tackled well by the old warhorse Dan Cole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh England Scotland game for Cole at Murrayfield. Loose ball, Dodge in trouble. England going to be onto this, are they? Yes, they are. And England have turned the ball over and. If they look up, they could stretch Scotland here, perhaps. Care, Oli Chesham, out the back, Furbank's up from fullback. He goes deep to George Ford, and then Ford's pass to Lawrence is loose, and Lawrence knocked it on. So, England doing well to get the turnover, not so well when it came to making the most of it, and Scotland will have the scrum nearer the 10-metre line than the 22. Maybe I would have thought that... I didn't hear the referee say advantage over there for the initial knock-on. Um, 
which I think England will be slightly agreed by. However, good scramble defence from, from Scotland because it was a woeful bit of attack. Just very unlike the Scots. And I don't know whether it's because of where they're trying to play or are they intimidated by the way that England defended, but they just don't look quite as connected and as slick. But it comes back, we've just mentioned, the crowd has been quiet and you have to give them a lift. So they're now forcing themselves to run back. We're actually against France. We saw them engage in kick tennis, not giving away any territory. Whereas there, they've run into nothing. Kieran Horn's run into traffic. Ball half turned over, back into the blitz defence. It's tricky. And that is the balance that you have to try and find. How are you going to try and take this English side apart? Well, there, because you're not giving the crowd anything, you're not giving anything back. They've run back when normally they wouldn't. Chris Ashton on the touchdown. If you handling errors from both sides can't be a conditions thing can it looks really dry from where we are yeah it's unfortunate for Ollie Lawrence though as you can see I mean we're 11 minutes in he's desperate to get a touch on the ball and he would have done on the previous line out had Slade got the ball away but Scotland side they haven't I haven't seen Finn once look for any sort of tactical kick to kick a corner they're just persisting on playing in this area and like Daw said they've not managed to get anything together yet well this scrum is well, it's a bit tip for tap, but it's also a mess. It's sapping loads of time out the game. And it's going to be a free kick for Scotland and a chance to get back into English territory as we tick towards the 12-minute mark. Russell just having a word with his forwards before clearing it into English territory. Scotland, well, Russell now switches play and sends up a huge kick. Test for this for Tommy Freeman, who comes forward and takes it well and sets it up in between the 10 and the 22. Welcome, listeners, to Five Live. Thank you very much, Ian Dennis. What an ending at Old Trafford. Fulham nicking it at the death. And all the scores coming in here on Five Live. We will have the full roundup of those full times and all the big news from across the Football League. But here at Murrayfield, England have made a strong start. They lead Scotland by seven points to nil after that George Furbank try. They've got a turnover. They seem some space. Has George Ford executed it? No. Duan van der does really well. His pass infield to Russell's a bit loose. Stop. Russell then clears straight down the throat of George Ford inside his own territory. He says to Freeman, chase this if you can, Tommy. And he whacks it up into the darkening Murrayfield sky. Is Freeman going to get that? Is Kinghorn going to get that? Oh, well played. Mario Toje from the ricochet. England are winning these 50-50s, aren't they? 13 minutes gone on five live and sports extra Scotland nil England seven for Ollie Lawrence with his first proper carry stuck his head down and sets it up just short of the 22 driven on once more by England and Everton Roots and it's a penalty to England yeah. Scotland infringing at the ruck here's Henry Slade nice short ball to early he's dumped by Russell who's very good defensively but England are starting to cook a bit as George Ford kicks for himself. Kinghorn's all over that. Back for the penalty. And Matt Dawson, surely you go for goal to take this lead to 10. Oh, you absolutely, 100% you do. That is the red zone for George Ford. You take it to 10, you're away from home after 14 minutes. You take 10 nil and Scarpa. But England rampant. Rampant with the ball, rampant without the ball. They are not only hungry but they are very well organized they're disciplined and scotland look a little bit in disarray you know they've they've, they've played themselves out of these situations against the likes of france and england before but it looks slightly rattled at finn russell again going to the referees not happy about something by this stage every single 50 50 has gone England's way. Every single ball in the air, Furbank, Freeman, it's that free 30, 40 metre gain. You go to there, you create a turnover. Wonderful work in there. It's been all England and Scotland really struggling to get a foothold in this game. I mentioned we'll get the full times from the three o'clock as they come in. We heard from Ian Dennis. Manchester United 1, Fulham 2, but George Ford's going for goal. From 7-0 to 10-0, up he steps straight through. What a start this is for England at Murrayfield. 15 on the clock, Scotland 0, England 7, full-time at Brighton. Brighton-Everton, Henry Moran. Full-time, 10-man, Brighton 1, Everton 1. Brathwaite, second-half blockbuster, cancelled out by a Lewis Dunk header in added time. Full-time, Brighton 1, Everton 1. Furpang slightly slices his kick it will be, give Scotland a platform just quickly Matt Dawson happy with a point at Brighton oh yes all day long don't you worry ten, about ten that. man Brighton as Henry said I don't know opportunity miss maybe waiting ahead 
Full time Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace Burnley, John Southall. Palace 3, Burnley nil. the key moment. Josh Brownhill sending off for Burnley 10 minutes before half time. Palace exploited it in the second half. Three goals in 11 minutes from Chris Richards, Jordan Ayew, and his John Philippe Mateta penalty. David Fafana had a late Burnley goal ruled out, but Oliver Glasner has lift off. Palace 3, Burnley nil. What a start for the new regime at Selhurst Park as well it's all slightly happened here because Scotland had a great line out platform then they lost the ball then England had a chance to pin Scotland back but Danny Kerr's kick went out on the full so kind of before we went to Henry and John we were around the 10 metre line with Scotland throwing and now we're around the 10 metre line with Scotland throwing yeah wasted opportunity there England's great turnover ball we've got to make the most of it Scottish Premiership, Rangers Hearts full-time, Conny McLaughlin. Rangers 5, Hearts nil. a five-star performance and a five-point lead at the top of the table for Rangers. Diamante, Cortez and two from Desters and one from Sub Silva wrapped it up and finished Rangers 5, Hearts nil. Nice one, Conny. I tell you what, Scotland are all over the place here, Johnny Beatty. They're at another platform. Again, their attack is all over the place and a knock-on and then holding on gives England the penalty. They say that, but it wasn't a knock-on. It was a rip, you think? Yeah, of yeah. course. It, I mean, George Ford's gone into, or somebody's gone in to rip it off him, off Van der Merwe, and it's popped out. It's not a knock-on. Well, Slade is going to kick, and he's going to take this up to around about the 22. England lead by 10. They've got a great platform here as we go to Ipswich. Becky Ives. Ipswich 3, Birmingham 1. Ipswich race for the top two. Still very much alive. Thanks to goals from Conor Chaplin, Jeremy Sarriento and Amari Hutchinson. Birmingham difficult afternoon. Never really got going. It's ended Ipswich 3, Birmingham 1. Xander Fagerson back on after his HIA. England prepared to throw into the line out. Rich Wolf and Duns at QPR Rotherham. Yeah, QPR 2, Rotherham 1. The final score. Tom Eves opened the score in for Rotherham early on. However, second half, Paul Smith and Chris Willock turned the game on its head. Rotherham losing their sixth on the trot. The hoops, though, out of the drop zone. Final score, QPR 2, Rotherham 1. Thanks a lot, Rich. I tell you what, England's line-out is working like clockwork, but then it's just breaking down. Both sides lacking that, that real accuracy. England do have a 10-point lead. Scotland have turned it over. Russell kicks. Advantage over from the knock-on. Tommy Freeman in the backfield. Just outside his own 22. He sends up a Gary O and asks his club mate Furbank to chase his up and takes that unopposed. There's a really good tackle coming in by Ben White, then Danny Kerr loses it, Scotland all over it, and Scotland do have the ball. A precious turnover for the Scots. Stuart Pelotti finds Grant Gilchrist. Now listen to Murrayfield. Now there might be something for the crowd to enjoy. As Scotland have it through, Russell flat pass, then knocks on. I tell you what, the handling errors from both sides plentiful, and I think there was no advantage, so a knock on by England will give Scotland the scrum in between the 10 and the halfway in English territory. It's frantic, isn't it? I mean, the line speed by England, catching Scotland man and ball, they've got no time. Yeah. It's a hand catch, and then you've got yeah, a white jersey on you. It's impressive by England. But Scotland, 30% possession. That is the result of this opening exchange. They haven't had any ball. A scrum now in English half. What can they produce? They have to have something to nail down some territory and retain a little bit of possession. Well, we'll wait for the scrum. It could take a while. A good chance to go to Oakwell. Barnsley Derby, Naz Premji. Barnsley 2, Derby 1, Neil Collins side. Close the gap to three points on the top two. Adam Phillips with a brace. Sonny Bradley with a Derby goal. Barnsley 2, Derby 1. Thanks very much, Naz. All the four times then in from the Premier League. Villa 4, Nottingham Forest 2. Brighton 1, Everton 1. Palace 3, Burnley 0. And thrillingly for Fulham, 2-1 winners at Old Trafford at Manchester United. Ben White, centre field to a Pilotti. That's much better from Scotland as Hugh Jones goes slicing through. Despairing tackle, but the offload might give Van der Merwe a chance. And he's going to score two last year at Twickenham. What a Murrayfield now. And Scotland right back in this. England first phase were there trying. Scotland straight back with the same. A long pass from Ben White as Trua Pilotti takes the ball to the game line, delays his pass and Hugh Jones breaks the line. Scottish support manages to get there, continuity is good and Van der Merw gets over, Scotland back in this game, an excellent piece of play. Oh, the knife through butter there for Hugh Jones, but again, you know he is Finn Russell's go-to man, hard to the line, Finn Russell somehow, somehow, and uh, Tua Pilotto somehow know that Hugh Jones is on into that. He, he does it too many times. The way he takes that late ball, times it to perfection where the England defender, they doesn't know, he doesn't know where to step in, whether to stay out, and just waltzes through. 
I think he probably had a little flashback. I know it was the, it was the other end a few years ago, but Hugh Jones had a flashback about <laughs> knowing the distance there, didn't yeah. he? I mean, those two make things happen, don't they? To a Pilotto and Jones. If Russell won't get you, one of them will. And Van der Merwe's brilliant try score record continues. And how about that from Finn Russell? He's not missed the kick this championship. Nine from now, nine is now ten from ten. Scotland seven, England ten. Ashley on the touchline. Man, amazing piece of play from Scotland. Before that, they've had absolutely nothing. Drop for two. The both teams have had a scrum play. They both resulted in tries, but. The try was made from Hugh Jones and his awareness to pop the ball off the floor up to Duan van der Merwe. England kick-off, 20 minutes gone. It's the word Johnny B to use, frantic. Fair few mistakes, a fair few scrums, but two great tries, which we don't always see in this fixture. Latterly, though, there have been some thrillers. Both team, teams have scored one of them. England's a set-piece move from 22. Scotland's a 50-metre effort. Van der Merwe scoring, and now Johnny Beatty, a penalty for Scotland, just what they wanted after that try. A little bit of a momentum shift again. Scotland's first real chance to attack. They've converted and taken points. A penalty now in their favour. Can they get back out into the English half and launch again? But very encouraging. Again, just that ability. Tupelo to Jones. We see it time and time again. Late on the gain line, and it's the threat of Finn Russell at the back. England forced to overread in defence, and that generates a bit of separation. Space created, wonderful try. I mean, Scotland needed that, didn't they, Matt Dawson? Because they were looking a bit ragged. They were they were struggling a bit for momentum, and then bang, they're right back in this game. Yeah, that, I mean, nothing, no change. I think that's probably the furthest Scotland had got up in into England territory, maybe onto the 10 metre line, possibly, and then breaking the line on the 10 metre line. A long way to go, and that's where you're seeing the quality of this back line. They know how to finish that. Offload off the deck that Ashley mentioned, world class, and then giving it to the finisher in Van der Merwe. Scotland through to a Pilotto, and look at the the switch in body language from the Scots, who were 10 points down. Now it's 7-10, but England win the penalty. That fierce battleground of the breakdown, this time edged by England, who themselves would have needed that just to steady things a bit, with Scotland threatening. Uh, to, to, to run away with the momentum. I mean, that, that's, a, that's an unbelievable steal. I sort of say unbelievable because, unfortunately, you know, whilst that sort of coming in from the side and having a hand on it and then moving your body to be onside type manoeuvre that these back rows are capable of doing, it's always going to slow the game down. And Underhill, I mean, just awesome there, but... It was, on, it was on the edge of coming in the side. Take it all then, let's not mention it anymore, we'll take that. England prepared to throw into the line-out when we get a chance. We'll go through some of the sporting headlines of the day. It would normally be sports report at this time. Ten past five on a Saturday. But it's Calcutta Cup rugby before we go to Bournemouth, Manchester City at the end of this game. That's over on Sports Extra in around about 20 minutes if you want the football. But the rugby is gripping us here at Murrayfield as England drive to about 12 metres out and then Scotland bundle them into touch. And so Scotland will throw in to the line out. Ben White threatened to go quickly, but he will uh, he will settle things down and Scotland will throw. Late drama at Old Trafford wasn't there as Alex Awobi scored deep into stoppage time. Fulham beating Manchester United 2-1 at Old Trafford. Villa closed the gap on the top three. They beat Nottingham Forest by four goals to two. Oliver Glasner begins life as Crystal Palace boss with a 3-0 win over 10-man Burnley. Brighton go down to 10 as well. Billy Gilmore sent off, but they score a late Lewis Dunk equaliser against Everton. Matt Dawson, though, happy with a point for well, Everton. You did tell me it was a late equaliser. Well, as an Everton fan, I thought you would have known that. I'm concentrating on work. <laughs> Bournemouth Man City at 5.30, as I mentioned. First half on Sports Extra, second half here on Five Live after we're done at Murrayfield. Arsenal Newcastle, big game as well at 8 o'clock as Scotland win the line out. They drive a bit. England trying to spoil on the floor, but it looks to be in Scottish possession. Only a few metres from the touchline. 20 metres from their own line. Scotland 7, England 10. 25 minutes that have raced by at Murrayfield. As Ben White takes his time and prepares to clear his lines with a box kick. Dan Cole just putting up one of his big paws. Um, he'll go for touch, Ben White. He finds his touch. And England will have the line out around about the 10 metre line just inside in the Scottish half. In the championship, by the way, third place Ipswich beat Birmingham to move within six points of leaders. Leicester... Southampton lost ground as they lose to Millwall. 
At the other end of the table, QPR out of the relegation zone. They beat bottom club England, Rotherham. Portsmouth, seven points at the top of League One now after a nil-nil draw at Charlton. That's because second place Derby and third place Bolton both lost. Mansfield are top of League Two. They beat Salford 5-1. And Rangers are five points clear in Scotland after whacking Hart 5-0. At Ibrox, Celtic play Motherwell tomorrow. England attack, Danny Kerr to Ellis Genge. Three points in it at Murrayfield. Genge with one of those trademark runs where he kind of gets a, a head of steam up. Quick ball, Kerr. Jamie George. Good carry from George. The England skipper up to the 22. Kerr, snappy pass to the left. Ford goes inside to Ollie Chesham, who's having a good game in the loose, Ollie Chesham. There for Kerr. He finds Genge again, who's a willing ball Scotland carrier. Moves. 14 minutes of the break. Scotland 7, England nah, 10. Kerr digs Don't for the ball. Now is a spoilt a bit by Scotland. He gets the rate of Ford. Ford is sat quarterback style. Scotland won a penalty, but Kerr gets it out, out to Daly. And Daly dribbles a clever kick through for himself. Really clever. Oh, I don't tell me he's done that. Daly has then batted it back to Van der Merwe to win the line out. It's gone Scotland's way, but that is a clever bit of footballing skill from Elliot Daly if it had come off. And we'll be watching the replay of that. I bet you the officials are going to watch the replay as well because trying to guide it into touch there from Sane and Elliot Daly has dived from behind to try and scoop the ball back in field knowing that there's a player there, but I think Stan was already in touch. Yeah, yeah, I think exactly that. Um, Great thinking. Though. But very good thinking from Elliot Daly, who is a footballer down to his bootstraps, isn't he? Now use it! As Scotland have been pe Tommy. pegged back a bit too much for your liking, Johnny Beatty, inside their own 22. White clears, does he go for touch? Yes, but gives England a line-up platform again. Don't hold players back in. Well, that's a lovely piece of play, isn't it? And again, it's this tactical game of horribly abrasive chess that you have to admire. England often willing just to stick the boot to ball, turn Scotland, make them play out from deep. And they have to back their skill set, get out of their 22. They have done, but only up to about the 35. England again, another chance to attack, another line out, and it's functioning at a very high level. It really is, as George finds his man in the middle of the line out. Care now playing at first receiver, slayed out the back to Ford, short to Furbank, and they've knocked it on England, and Scotland then looking to play. And there's a bit of a gap there if Kyle Stain could have seen it, Johnny, because Furbank was up from fullback, could have put a boot through it. Russell will now do that, but Furbank has positioned himself well. I wonder if one of the reasons he's starting is his pace across the ground, Furbank. He covered that nicely, puts up a well-weighted Gary Owen. That's going to drop, though, in the hands of Blair Kinghorn. To a Murrayfield roar, he shimmies over the 10-metre line. 12 minutes to go to half-time. Scotland 7, England 10 as Schumann drives, urged on. By his adoring Murrayfield crowd, there goes Russell, Russell loses it. And England might want to play, they don't look as if they want to, maybe they wanted to have a scrum, Kerr is caught, and England will have slowish ball, slap bang in centre field. As Scotland looks to counter ruck, Cole is in there at first receiver. And Genge flings it out to Ford, Ford to Ollie Lawrence, who sticks his head down. What have England got here? The ball is quite slow, but they're in a reasonably promising position of Murrayfield. As Underhill takes it from Ellis Genge, cares back on his feet, and he sends it out to Ford. And now, God, could carry that from Maratoja. He slipped to tackle, but Scotland have done a really good job at slowing up England's ball. So I do wonder when England will go to the boot. Ellis Genge out the back to Ford, Ford. And then it's been knocked on, so many handling errors as Duan van der Merwe tries to go round. Ben Earl and he's skinned him and van der Merwe's up the left touchline and he's going in for another brilliant score. What is it about this guy and this fixture? Two brilliant tries at Twickenham last year and another Duan van der Merwe classic in the Calcutta Cup and Scotland lead. And it's come from another unforced error. It's England coughing up the ball again. Furbank, Furbank, I think the ball's come off his head. Scotland quick to react, shifted the point of contact away to space. And Van der Merv with the pace to burn Ben Earl. He found himself in a one-on-one -on -one situation, gets on the outside, and once those after burners are on, there's no catching him. He absolutely loves this fixture. Another famous try. And Scotland with little to no possession two tries ridiculous from Duan van der Merwe Furbank oh he's got to catch those hasn't he Hugh Jones clever to get the ball away and then van der Merwe stood up Ben Earl and scorched down the left touchline 
and then kind of unnecessarily dived against the fly. I mean, he almost messed that up. He can do whatever he likes. I suppose he can, but <laughs> what's he doing that what, dive What for? he just did for 60 yards, he can do whatever he likes, so how he yeah. dives okay, in. Okay, okay. I think he was just, I mean, he nearly put Ashley to shame there. As far as diving in to score a try, Chris Ashton was pretty good, but... Finn Russell cannot miss this Six Nations. He is not missing today either. He's kicked two from two, both from the touchline. Scotland 14, England 10. Ashley on the touchline, your view of that Van der Merwe special. Oh, I had, I've definitely got one of the best views in the house of that try. I could see Duane Van der Merwe. He saw it was Earl and he eyeballed Slade and thought, you know what, I have got him here. There was no second thought. Sometime in that position you can think, do I go in, do I go out? Nah. He was gone and he knew he had it in him from the second he got the ball. Well, we wondered how the Murrayfield crowd would react to England's fast start going 10-0 up. But Johnny Beatty, if you want to get the crowd back engaged, that's a good way of doing it. Well, they're back. And again, a question for you, Doss. Like 60% possession, Scotland down to 40%. An England player in this situation, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, England have had so much of the ball, but they've just been loose. All right, and case in point, Elliot Daly goes for a grubber kick, kicks it straight into the Scotland guts. I mean, England, from having such a fast start and a precise start, have gone really quite loose. And Scotland are buzzing with confidence and they're winning the little battles and they have it over halfway. White digs for the ball. Grant Gilchrist out the back to Finn Russell. Oh, nice ball. Almost got Hugh Jones away. And Jones has got away. And he kicks for himself. And he kicks for Van der Merwe. Oh, I was going to say, he was almost in for a hat-trick. George Ford has kind of done a, a football challenge to kick the ball out. Ford's boot has saved the day, otherwise Van der Merwe's in for a 32-minute hat-trick. Well, yeah, and, and Scotland are livid with the official here on whether Hugh Jones had kicked the ball away and was tackled afterwards. What a save from George Ford there. They say the keeper under pressure. I mean, Dan Cole has dragged him down there after the kick. That is a penalty all day long. Well, Murrayfield agrees with you, Matt. I wonder if in slow motion it's a bit more incriminating and whether Cole was committed than <laughs> Wiley Old Fox would say he was. Um, but those are the dark arts because Hugh Jones would have been away. But either way, George Ford's boot, Schmeichel's style, has, uh, has saved the day for England. But it is all Scotland. And what a fluctuating first half. It was all England. Now it's all Scotland. And Murrayfield will tell you with their noise. But England then win the line out. But they've given it away. And Scotland have it. I don't know how they came away with that Scotland through Scott Cummings, but they did. And now Cummings' second-row partner, Grant Gilchrist, drives on. Four points in it. Scotland 14, England 10. Seven minutes to go till the break here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Our sports sectionists will be with the football shortly, but everything stays on Five Live. Every kick and pass until we go to Bournemouth City. That full game is on sports section. You won't miss anything from the football or the rugby as Scotland keep attacking. Blair Kinghorn's in the pocket. He goes crossfield. Van der Merwe will take that. Is there penalty advantage? Yes, there is. Scotland goes seven clear now, Johnny BT. I think what a shot on the arm that would be. Again, Scotland now retaining possession. Aiming one out into this blitz defence, it's very hard if you have a long pass from nine to a first receiver because the line comes up and gets you, so they're just half yard out from the rock. Gentle pick and goes, latches on the backsides, trying to get over that gain line and teasing England. They're just coming offside. Smart play by Scotland, a much better in attack. It's like a, it's like a blitz fitness that England don't have. It's all well and good in the first five, ten minutes, you're coming out hard and fast out the blocks, but when you've been scrummaging, when you've been mauling, when you've been going from ruck to ruck to ruck, to then go and blitz, it's difficult. It's impossible. And as somebody that played under that system with Fabian Galtier, if you're not used to it physically, it's impossible. And technically, if you're not used to doing it collectively as a team, you can fall apart. And then does it then have an effect on your attack? You know, if you, your defence is having to work overtime, England have just coughed that ball, haven't they? Under Scottish pressure, of course, but some of them... A bit unforced as Russell bangs it over. Five minutes to the break. Scotland 17, England 10. 17 unanswered points for the Scots. Let's go back to Ashley on the touchline. Ashley. Yeah, we mentioned it this week in the build-up to the game about the emotion that England were going into and so many lads that haven't been up here 
And you just wonder if that's what they've done in this first half an hour, is they played the game on emotion. And now we're seeing that unravel a little bit as Scotland have come more and more to the game. You've got to ask the question, have they just been playing the first bit on the emotional side of it? And I wonder what Steve Borthwick will think about in terms of replacements, whether he needs to make anything soon. He sent his... Um, his eight replacements on a trot around Murrayfield. England have got the ball back. Maratoja's having a good game. And now Kerr finds Gensch. Can England respond? Seven points in it as we edge towards half-time on Five Live. Scotland 17, England 10. They drive on through routes just short of the 22 to England. There's a good opportunity for England. They've got options left and right. They go right. Freeman's in a first receiver off his right wing. Underhill hugging this touchline. Good carry from Freeman into the 22. Kerr out to Jamie George, the skipper. He throws a dummy and is well tackled by Darge. Gilchrist in there too. Kerr digging for the ball but he's been caught and the ball's been really slowed up Marawatoje barrels into a couple of Scots but they win that contest for Xander Fagerson prominent through Scotland Kerr Ford looking for a drop goal here he's got ages he struck it nicely I think he's got this one he has George Ford three drop goals in Marseille at the World Cup another four beauty here England to within Love four, it. Scotland 17, England Love 13. It. That's what you do when you're away from home and you're seven points down. That is exactly what you do. Take the sting out of the game. You might well be booing Scottish fans, but brilliant. Keep it coming. Fantastic play from George Ford. Right, who has got what up their sleeve for the final three and a half minutes of this first half, which has featured some scruffy rugby, some thrilling rugby, and some captivating rugby. Sports Extra listeners will be leaving us for Bournemouth against Manchester City very shortly. So if you are on Sports Extra and want the rugby, just flick over to Five Live. And if you're on Five Live and want the football, just flick over to Sports Extra on BBC Sounds, all the stations next to each other. Really easy to flick between Five Live and Sports Extra. As Danny Kerr looks to clear, he does. That's a decent enough touch finder from Kerr. It will, though, give Scotland a line out and maybe their last big attack of this first half. Scotland 17, England 13. Well, to me, England are obviously saying that they're happy just to give the line out to Scotland. Danny Kerr wasn't going for any kind of box kick. That was just a clearance. England fancy their chances of maybe just poaching some of the line out ball. And, and, and Johnny, uh, Scotland have been, there's been a lot of movement in the line outs, hasn't there? They're sort of, they're overcomplicating it slightly. Well, there's one area that's a special subject for Steve Borthwick, it is the line an absolute maestro, and they've Dempsey managed to scrabble two or three, but Scotland win this one. Yeah, Dempsey, Jack Dempsey, lovely ball from Turner to Pilot, who runs into Ford and takes Ford with him. Ben White, centre field, that's nice, driven on by Schumann, there for White, out the back he goes to Turpilotu, Hugh Jones, who's had a... A lot of ball and made some big things happen this half. Scotland 17, England 13. Two minutes left of the first half on five live. Darge as England rushed up and Slade's got it. That's the blitz working. He belted downfield and says run after it to his teammates. Danny Kerr is furthest up there. Carl Stain is back. Can Kerr scrag him? Chesson's up there. Stain does well, but good tackle that. Dan Cole, an excellent clearing out from Scotland to secure the ball. And Ben White will have a little bit of time, but... That's an example of the England defence causing Scotland problems. Well, what about the follow-up by Cole? 60 metre effort, bringing it the whole way, clobber of a tackle. George Ford sends it up, tester for Russell. He will take this though comfortably. OK, a minute to breathe, a second to breathe with a minute to go of this first half, Matt Dawson. Yeah, shame. Shame that uh, I don't think George Ford was necessarily going deep into... Scottish territory with that kick just outside would have been lovely there for Scotland to carry on playing just, both sides have probably started to work each other out um, you know who's who's playing south ball who's who's orthodox here there it's been very very cagey with that fast start from England where Scotland just were not in the game all of a sudden Scotland look dangerous they look like they want the game broken up they want the ball in play whereas England are now going to the touch lines and want to slightly slow it down and I think that comes back to Scotland probably the more settled side better oiled with more rhythm and they've created those clean line breaks England once from first phase but just when it gets to multi-phase they look a little bit more hesitant 
when they have ball in hand they've coughed up a few opportunities and that's where Scotland have also pounced so just that English side still settling still trying to find their feet and work out how they want to play with ball in hand and it's going to be England if they get their line out right that will have the last effort of this first half taking a bit of a while for this line out to form but Andrew Brace is happy Jamie George has it only two Englishmen in the line-out, but the rest will slope slowly in at Toje, Chess and Metal. And George goes to throw a couple of dummies and he goes to Taylor. Toje takes it, the Saracens combination. England set up them all 40 metres out, four points in it. Scotland 17, England 13. 15 seconds left of the first half at Murrayfield. England get a little bit of traction with their maul. And they're still nicely formed and now they peel away through Ben Earl. He's not a million miles away from the 22. Maybe four things. Drop goal again, Matt Dawson, right on half-time. As Ellis Kendry with a kind of hop and a skip, and then he sets it up. Still a bit far out, perhaps, for Ford. He's not looking to drop, he's looking to play. And he finds Lawrence, who took it behind him, and then almost got through. Care to the left. Roots getting a bit more into this game than he did last time against um, Wales. And then Danny Kerr has gone to play it quick, and he's lost it on a Scottish body on the ground. And that will be half time. Good opportunity for England not quite gone to hand and that is that for the first half England with 10-0 up Tommy uh, Freeman putting on a plate for George Furbank Furbank's first test try a George Ford conversion and penalty then Scotland what a response 17 unanswered points with two brilliant Van der Merwe tries one a team effort one a Van der Merwe solo and then from 17-10 George Ford popping a neat drop goal to the half-time score Scotland 17 England 13 a word from you Johnny Beatty then Matt Dawson and then back to Chappers I think we have to be happy, don't we, with that, given how the first opening 10-15 went. Scotland scrapping their way back into the game off scraps of possessions, really, and being very, very clinical with what they had. They'll be delighted. 17-13 at the break, four-point lead. They'll be happy. Well, I, th I think if if there are some England match winners out there, like Scotland had match winners. They were, there were two brilliant, brilliant moments from, from Hugh Jones and a finish from... Uh, do and then an amazing finish from Dan van der Merwe. So, you know, they're the moments that you need at these big games. Someone from England needs to step up, get control of this second half because they're giving themselves the opportunities and we're, in, we're set for a brilliant second. Half time, Mark. Scotland 17, England 13. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. So, second half on the way, and then once the second half is done, we will be bringing you commentary from Bournemouth, Manchester City. Uh, their visitors' commentary of this one will start on Sports Extra, and John Akers will keep us updated here. Yeah, we're just underway here. Manchester City with a chance to cut the gap to Liverpool to just a point and establish a little four-point cushion over Arsenal in third. Three changes then for Pep. Kevin De Bruyne is still on the bench. The first time Julian Alvarez hasn't started this season in the league. He's on the bench along with Jack Grealish, who's back from injury. So Nathan Ake against his former club is back. Mateus Nunes as well and Mateo Kovacic. They're coming in to replace Walker, Alvarez and Bob. One change for Bournemouth. Kirkes replaces Kelly. Uh, thank you very much. So in the Premier League today, uh, no early game. All of these were at three o'clock. Uh, Aston Villa four, Nottingham Forest two, Brighton one, Everton one, Palace three, Burnley nil, Manchester United one, Fulham two. A late winner at Old Trafford for Marco Silva's side. So the table... As it stands, Liverpool have 60, Manchester City 56, Arsenal 55, Villa now have 52 and a five clear of Tottenham who are on 47. Manchester United on 44, but they've played a game more than Spurs. Brighton have 39, Newcastle 37, West Ham 36, Chelsea 35 and Wolves 35. They've all played just 25. Fulham have 32 from 26, Bournemouth 28 from 24. Palace, thanks to that win over Burnley, have 28 from 26. Brentford, 25 from 25. Forest have 24 and Everton have 21. They both played 26. Luton, 20 from 25. Burnley, 13 from 26. And Sheffield United, who play Wolves tomorrow, have 13 from 25. Full commentary on tomorrow's Five Live Sport, by the way of the League Cup final, Chelsea against Liverpool. It is a three o'clock kickoff. Doing this little bit of Five Live Sport, live from the DW Stadium, where we have the World Club Challenge a little bit later on. It's an eight o'clock kickoff. You can listen to it on Sports Extra. You can watch it on BBC Television. Dave Woods providing the commentary on Sports Extra alongside me. It is mouth-watering, this. 
It is. I mean, the two best teams on the planet at the moment. It's only week two of the Super League, but I think Wigan are already showing that they are going to be the team to watch this year, having won the grand final last year. Penrith have won the last three NRL grand finals, which tells you how good they are, of course. But they did, of course, lose to St. Helens on home turf last year in this very game. So I think their ambitions are raised a little. Full house here tonight, sold out about four or five weeks ago. It's going to be epic, I think. And you sense, don't you, very quickly, that the defeat to St. Helens last year is not going to necessarily help Wigan this year because they will be seriously motivated or Penrith absolutely I think Penrith were very heavy favourites last year St Helens beat them with a golden point extra time drop goal so that tells you how epic that was Uh, but Wigan I I just fancy Wigan here tonight but a lot of people much wiser than me are tipping Penrith Uh, last year's game uh, down under was delayed for 50 minutes as a warm front passed through the area (laughs) guarantee it won't be the same here in Wigan tonight. Eight o'clock kickoff. Listen on Sports Extra. You can watch it on BBC Two. 5.33. Here's Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio Five Live. Mark, thank you. Good evening. The MP Lee Anderson has been suspended by the Conservative Party after refusing to apologise for comments he made about the London Mayor Sadiq Khan during an appearance on GB News. Pressure had been mounting on Rishi Sunak to take action after Mr Khan claimed the Cabinet's silence on the issue amounted to condoning racism. The body of the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been handed to his mother more than a week after he died in an Arctic prison. His supporters have accused the Kremlin of being behind his sudden death. President Zelensky has issued a rallying cry to Ukrainians as the country marks the second anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion. At a ceremony attended by several Western leaders in Kyiv, he urged his people to keep fighting. And here, hundreds of people have marched through central London in a show of support for Ukraine. And Scotland's First Minister, Humza Yousaf, laid a wreath at the Scottish National War Memorial after attending a service in Edinburgh Castle to mark the anniversary. <laughs> Hello, I'm Greg Norton, and welcome to the show. Oh, wait. Comic Relief has borrowed a few famous faces to help raise money for Red Nose Day, so we've had to find some um, replacements. So, tell us about your new film. Oh, you wrote a book, did you? Well, that's not really as good, is it? Just like the real Graham, you can do something funny for money. Will Graham be back from his bag sale soon? Find out how to get involved at bbc.co.uk slash rednoseday. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Uh, back to Murrayfield shortly for the second half of the Carl Cutter Cup. Goalless at uh, Bournemouth between Bournemouth and Manchester City. Let's get some reaction from Old Trafford. Late winner for Fulham this afternoon. They beat Manchester United 2-1. It came from Alex Awobi. Well, Alex, that's... Uh... I think it's only th- the third Fulham win here ever in the history of the club. So how does that feel for everybody involved? Yeah, crazy. I mean, there was a stat about we only won in like 21. So I can't remember the stat. It was crazy. But to get a result against, Old, uh, against Man United at Old Trafford like this, and hopefully we can just kick on from here. So, yeah, we'll take this as a world of confidence to take it into the next game against Brighton and see where we can go on the table. What does it say about you that it looked as though two points had gone, but you managed to rally yourselves again and had not just the one that you put away, but another chance to score again? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the whole game we had a few opportunities. I, I feel like it was only a matter of time that one would go in. I mean, I had a couple in the first half. There was more in the first half as well. So we always knew, even though we conceded a goal, that we'd still be able to create an opportunity, especially when you have a Dharma Chura, you can drive us off the pitch like he did. Um, yeah, we always knew that we'd have one more chance before the game ends. You've played here a few times with other teams as well. Have you ever known a game here to be this open for the visiting team? Um, maybe not so, but at the same time, like the gaffer gave us instructions and we were brave. We stuck to the game plan and it worked. We were able to create opportunities. So, yeah, I think it worked really well in our favour. And tell us about the winning goal. You, you kept your cool nicely. Yeah, I mean, I had two in the first half that I should have kept my composure a bit better, but I knew the players we have, they'll give me the ball and I'll be able to have one more chance. And uh, when I said I'd gone to the opportunity, I, I was going to keep my composure and make sure I hit the target this time. And I was able to do so and, and give the keeper the eyes. So, yeah, it was, it was a great finish and hopefully I can add more to the season as well. Alex Awobi with Guy Mowbray after his winner at Old Trafford. Interesting scores in the Championship today. Third place, Leicester beat Birmingham. So they've now gone within six points of leaders, Leicester. Another defeat for Southampton, though. They were beaten at home uh, by Millwall, uh, with Neil Harris returning as Millwall's manager. So the top of the table, because West Brom and Hull drew one all at Hull earlier. So Leicester have 78, Leeds 72. Leeds beat Leicester last night. Ipswich also have 72. Southampton 67. 
West Brom's 56 and Hull 55. They're the playoff places. At the bottom, massive win for QPR after they beat bottom club Rotherham. Also big wins for Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield. So Stoke drop into the bottom three. Rotherham have 19, Sheffield Wednesday 32, Stoke have 35, QPR 35, Millwall 36 and Huddersfield 37. Let's go uh, back to the Premier League. Aston Villa beating Nottingham Forest 4-2 this afternoon. Here's Unai Emery. Very important. We, we reacted very well. Uh, more or less, we we are feeling very comfortable here. We are feeling confident here. We are supported. And we, are, we are more or less deserving to win. And, and we played a really fantastic match in uh, in the first half, of course. And the second half, oh, only the first maybe 15 minutes, we were a little bit with some doubts. But we again reacted and we, we took calm. And we played in our style and playing personality the last 30 minutes. And I think we, do, we, we deserve this, this, this three points. How pleased were you with Douglas Suiz getting two goals to have a midfielder chipping in with a couple? It's very, very handy. Yes, yes, uh, of course. <laughs> very good and very happy. The second half, he, he was as well because for us, he's, he's a key player. Mm. And sometimes we need him to be focused and to be successful on the pitch uh, every time. And the, at the beginning of the second half, he lost, he lost two balls in the middle and was a really difficult moment for us. And he reacted very very well again. Mm. He reacted very well and again he controlled the game and he was the key the key player for us the last 30 minutes like he, he did the first half. Let's go back to Bournemouth, Manchester City. John Akers. Two good chances for either team. Haaland's just missed an excellent chance. He was away. His first touch just let him down. Forced him a bit wide on his right foot. Completely missed the target. Bournemouth go up the other end. And Kirkhairs, who's been out for a long time with injury, has just forced a good save out of Edison. He tipped it over the bar. Bournemouth have a corner. Bournemouth nil, Manchester City nil. Quite a tough day for the teams at the top of League One. Portsmouth have a seven-point lead at the top. They've got a goal of straw at Charlton. So they have 73. Derby have 66. They were beaten at Barnsley. And Bolton were thrashed 4-1 at Blackpool. They also have 66. Barnsley up to 63. Peterborough won at Cambridge. They have 59. Oxford still in a playoff spot. They have 57, although they were beaten at home by Leighton Orient. Stevenage now just within a point of them after they beat Wickham. Carlisle stayed bottom of the table uh, after a 2-1 defeat at Bristol Rovers. They have just uh, 20 points. Fleetwood are above them on uh, 27. Uh, they were got a point at Exeter today. Port Vale have 31 and Cheltenham 33. They are the bottom four. Let's return to the Premier League. Henry Moran saw a draw between Brighton and Everton. Yeah, Brighton won, Everton won. Everton so close to their first win since mid-December and how valuable it would have been for the side in 17th. Jared Branthwaite's rocket of a shot, 15 minutes remaining, stunned the Amex. Brighton had been dominant, but they were staring at defeat and that spectre loomed larger when Billy Gilmore was shown a straight red for going over the top of the ball. And crashing into Anana, definite red card. He can have no complaints. Surely Everton could see it out. Well, no. Four minutes of added time gone. Lewis Dunk, 400th appearance for Brighton, leaping highest to level from a Pascal Gross cross. The wait goes on for Everton. Brighton will see this as a chance missed. Uh, Mansfield are top of League Two on goal difference. Remember, they put nine past Harrogate a couple of weeks ago. Well, they put five past Salford today. They beat Salford by five goals to one. They have 63 points and they've got a game in hand in Stock on Stockport, who dropped to second also on 63. Stockport held at home by Swindon. Crew are in third. They have 61 points. Uh, they got a 3-1 win at Notts County. Wrexham, MK Dons, Barrow, who's game with Bradford and Gillingham, complete the playoff spots. Sutton and Forest Green Rovers continue to be the bottom two, although Forest Green Rovers did get a win today at home to Tranmere. To John Southall next at Selhurst Park. Still waiting for Oliver Glasner to come out, Mark. Let's hope this isn't a sign of things to come at 20-6 to 6 on a Saturday, <laughs> Saturday <laughs> evening. <laughs> But he's had the perfect start, hasn't he? I mean, it's been a, a great day for him. His side played with an energy, with an attacking intent. They were helped by the, the sending off. There's no two ways about that. Uh, Josh Brownhill showing a straight red card, 10 minutes before half time. James Trafford in the goal didn't help him. His pass sold him really short. Pulled down Jefferson Lerma, threw on goal, and off he went. Palace made them pay. 11 minute period in the second half with goals from Richards, Ayu, and a Mateta penalty. Burnley had a late goal. 
disallowed from Fafana, but another damaging defeat for them. Just spoke to Vincent Company. Not really happy that Adam Wharton could have been shown a second yellow card, but you know he took the defeat on the chin. But there's no wins from seven league games for them now. But what a significant day for Crystal Palace and their new manager. We wait to speak to him. A new start, a 3-0 win, and they're now eight points off those relegation places. Uh, thank you uh, very much. In Scotland, Rangers are five clear at the top. They put five past hearts at Ibrox. Celtic in second play Motherwell tomorrow. Let's go back to Old Trafford. Uh, here's Eric Ten Hag after Manchester United's 2-1 defeat to Fulham with Guy. Well, Eric, tell us what the fault, where the fault lay for the winning goal for Fulham today from your point of view. Oh, it's um, a throw-in in the corner. Uh, we have them under pressure and there's one player in the wrong position. So as a team, uh, we should manage that and that everyone is in the right position. And um, we have uh, the experience is on, on the pitch and then we let them escape and uh, that was avoidable. How frustrating is that for you when your team had worked to get back into it? I, I have to uh, um, reward the team and they showed big character, had to fight back in this game and they got the equaliser and I think we very deserved in that moment uh, the equaliser, we went for the win so once again this team showed big personality and character. Eric Ten Hag with Guy Mowbray. Match of the day, 10.30 tonight on BBC One. Let's go back to the Calcutta Cup. Scotland 17, England 13. The second half now live on five. Live with Chris Jones and the team. Yeah, the players are out. Finn Russell preparing to kick. Matt Dawson well nourished after putting away an enormous bag of crisps. Just fruit for me as Finn Russell kicks us off in the second half. Scotland 17, England 13. Listen to that Murrayfield roar as Ben Hull. Oh, he's almost got away under pressure from a few on-rushing Scots, including Carl Stain, he does well, does Ben Earl. 17-13 to Scotland as Kerr clears his lines, makes his touch, but gives Scotland a good platform. Who will strike first and take a huge step towards that Calcutta Cup? Johnny Beatty is, is frantically signalling a change, so well, we watched, put us in, Johnny. As Scotland jogged out, we saw two Pilotto really struggling just to get on the field he's now hobbling off um, and Cam Redpath has been ushered on in his place he looks really disappointed as he comes off the field obviously it was a try we'll try and get you out see how you go running out but it hasn't worked end of the game for two Pilotti big miss for Scotland Redpath has won Calcutta Cups before he can certainly do it at this level but two Pilotti has been great for a while for Scotland and he had his moments in that first half too Scotland on the attack at the start of the second half. Nice little ball back to Russell, who exposes Daly rushing up. Oh, that's perfect from Russell. And there are Scots on their feet around us as England are pinned to five metres from their own line. Yeah, homework done at half-time there, wasn't it? There's no chance they would have been doing that in the first half. That's straight out of analysis where the space is. Yeah, good line out from England, though, at speed, over the tail. Brave, clever. Brave and clever as Jamie George found his Saracens teammate Ben Earl and now Danny Kerr to Dan Cole, who is eventually wrestled to the ground, almost was turned, but okay. 110 caps of experience for Cole. But England are right, right, and right where they don't want to be and where Scotland want them as Kerr clears and he's made a bit of ground but not loads. And it's giving Scotland Johnny Beatty a brilliant opportunity to start this second half. Line out. It's not even 15 out, is it? It's a really nifty opportunity, created again. The boot of Finn Russell pinging them back to their five-metre line. The work again to pin them in that area. Danny Kerr with a tight angle, all you can find. It's a 10-metre clearance of Scotland now with the beauty of an opportunity to launch an attack. Can they strike first in the second period? Turner to throw, he goes to the tail. Beautiful drill, Scotland. And they have set up a mall and Murrayfield implores them to drive and they say, yeah, we'll do that. Listen to Murrayfield as Scotland go to within six or seven metres of the English line. The ball is now slowed up. Scotland unable to march England any further back. 
I know it's not his style, but I wonder if Russell might think drop goal just to extend the lead to seven, but I'm sure he'll keep playing. Scotland 17, England 13. Seven metres out the Scots. Slap bang in centre field. Almost under the English crossbar as they pick and go around the corner. Ben White comes to the left as the Scotland forwards. Good carry to within five. Nice quick ball for the Scots and they go again through Rory Dodge. Five metres out Scotland. Murrayfield urging all its heroes as England are despairingly tackling on the five-metre line, looking to steal. But it's still there for Scotland, who come to the left. No, Six no. metres out or so, four points in it. Ben White sniping, caught by George Ford, but he's gone to within five, has Ben White. There for Grant Gilchrist, he's dragged into the ruck. Murrayfield in fine void to the start of the second half. Big no tackle race. coming in on the no fringe, race. but still in Scottish possession. Tackles what do you want here, way. Johnny Beatty? Patience, or does Scotland need some incision? No. Just hold on to ball, red zone, again patience, nothing too frantic, nobody going off in isolation, just keep squeezing England and that is... England win the penalty, they go round the corner and it looked like Sam Underhill again, that is a big old moment because a Scotland try would have sent this place into orbit. Yes, Scotland will be ruining that opportunity, they just... they rushed that last pick round the corner from, was it Darge or... Where it just needed more Scots on their feet. Just that bit of patience. There's nothing wrong with, again, scrum half foot on the ball. We're in no rush. We've got England exactly where we want them. Yeah. Shift the point of contact, or as we just said, Finn Russell back into the pocket, bang over three. It's a right. Big penalty for England. Henry Slade getting some treatment. Chris Ashton on the touchline. You saw Sione Tuapalotu limp right past you as Scotland already manned out, and Henry Slade getting treatment. Yeah, that's a big miss for Scotland. He was struggling as they went in at half-time as well, actually, so he must have caught it and played on first half. It's a it's a big loss. I think... I'm not sure if Steve needs to unload some of this England bench. I'm just watching George Martin here run by. Get some of them on. I don't think you wait for Scotland to score the next, next points for that to force your hand. Get them on the field. Um, George Martin especially, he's a big carrier, he's a big tackler. Cunningham South, as we've known, has had an impact in the past few weeks. Get him on the field. Mm. Theo Dan, Joe Marler, Will Stewart, George Martin, Chandler Cunningham South, Ben Spencer, Finn Smith and Emmanuel Fay were both so the England replacements. Already Scotland have used one of theirs, Cam Redpath on for Tour Pilotu. Slade is up and about, a burst of Belinda Carlisle to keep us company as Slade was getting some treatment. And now England have a line out Matt Dawson not yet in Scottish territory but a start to get back into the second half which has been all Scotland in the first four yes sort of their, their first attacking two set minutes, for England what have they learned from the half time and the, and the chat with the coaches well, well Scotland win the ball first. well exactly Scotland pick off the line out Russell as England shot up then there's a charge down by Lawrence almost off the back of Bath teammate Russell's kick oh well played Cal Redpath he's through how has he done that Redpath and he's over the 10 and he's skipping all Fullback, brilliant stuff from Redpath. Scotland might have numbers here. Cross kick from Russell. Van der Merwe's on a hat trick. Van der Merwe's got a hat trick. What a try! What a hat trick! Magnificent from Scotland. And it's another try that's come from absolutely nothing. A half charge down. Cam Redpath, the first man to react. Beats two defenders. Pirouettes makes a 40-meter line break. And Finn Russell, the ball recycled, takes his time, lifts his head, sees the space in the far corner, the crossfield kick on a sixpence. And Van der Merwe gets his third of the afternoon. What a sequence. I mean, there's a couple of things that I absolutely love about that. I mean, as let's not underplay what Cam Redpath just did there. Not only the break, the pirouette, etc. But he knew he was isolated. He had a little dance around the fullback. Furbank just for that extra one or two seconds but I, I reckon as Cam Redpath is hitting the deck ready for the ruck Finn Russell is already thinking crossfield kick please that is all I'm going to do and he knows Van der Merwe is going to be on that left wing there was not even a shadow a, a shed of doubt that the ball was going to go through his hands it was going on the boot crossfield kick instinct practice partnerships that's what you're seeing right there flower of scotland around murrayfield as england make two changes ben spencer for danny care ethan roots off george martin on russell it's not kicked another one has he 
Of course he has. 24-13. Van der Merbe hat trick. I tell you what, Johnny, that's like a left foot, right foot header kind of hat trick, isn't it? That is one of those great, great hat tricks, had a bit of everything. And I have to agree with Matt. I mean, it is just the rugby IQ, it's the speed of thought. He knows that everyone in the backfield has been drawn into that ruck. There is nothing in backfield. Heads up rugby, speed of thought, rugby IQ. Finn Russell is your man. Outstanding creativity. Well, England came from nine down against Wales. They're going to have to come from 11 down against the rampant Scotland at a raucous Murrayfield. 47 minutes gone. Scotland 24, England 13. And if Scotland score next, Matt Dawson, that Calcutta Cup is staying up here. Yeah, well, there's, uh, I, mean, I know you've, you've just mentioned the substitutions, but... It's a bit. It's, it's a key one now. I'm, I mean, Danny Kerr's not had a good day. Let's. Uh, this, it's just one of those things. It's a tough afternoon. It's a tough place to go. But he's not. He's not had a great afternoon. Ben Spencer has got an opportunity and needs to take this opportunity to manage the England side. Not just get to the rucks and do all the passing, but get England into a position where they can use their weapons and attack because it simply hasn't been done since the 15th minute Scotland 24 England 13 as Spencer his first bit of test rugby since the World Cup final in 2019 his kick is brilliant and England have come storming away through George Martin what an impact the replacements make with the Spencer kick the Martin burst now here's Genge took it out the hands of Ford and he drives good energy about England who trailed by 11 Ford into the wide channels. England only seven or eight, maybe nine metres out from the Scottish line. They have to respond to that Van der Merwe third. They drive up. 24-13 to Scotland. They come to the left. Tommy Freeman's off his wing. England clear out. Therefore, Spencer. Scotland slowing the ball up effectively. Martin again straight away got into the fray. England have a penalty advantage of Scotland in fringe. Spencer comes to the left slade. Then it's been picked off by Kyle Stain. But England will have the penalty. And now Matt Dawson, if you're out there, as you have been in this fixture, and your brain is much as you often say, and the emotions are swirling, what's the call here? Points, corner, scrum. Uh, right, right now, for me, I would be going to the corner. I mean, I know George Ford has gone for the post. Fine but you're still going to be eight points behind. England need to score tries. That's a great opportunity. Um, it, it sort of upsets me a little bit, JB, there, that even when the advantage was given to a side yeah, there... I think it's number one. I'll get the number for you now. Well, we're going to go to Bournemouth in a moment. There's been a goal. We're going to have a TMO review as well, so hold that thought, Johnny BT. Might on. be some foul play. Let's go to the goal and we'll, we'll work out what's happening with the television match official. Bournemouth, Man City, John Akers. Manchester City are ahead. Haaland, a little dink ball over the top to him. Did well, turned, left foot shot, saved by the goalkeeper and following up to pass into an empty net was Phil Foden. It's Bournemouth nil, Manchester City one. Still trying to find the angle and because they've got to get the pictures from the broadcast, it can take a while. Well, Gen's in trouble here. He kind of... I mean, that's lazy. Yeah, there's no rap there, is that's there? Talk lazy it. rucking. And listen, he, he's worked There's all the coming wrong. in up. There we go. He's just flopped into a ruck late, unnecessary. He's tucked his left arm under, under. And a, la a lazy, lazy uh, hit. Uh, now, Gracie, I don't okay. know where the contact is. This angle here shows I'm me not, that he's onto his own player. I'm yeah. not sure so, the contact uh, is on the head or anything like you. that. Um, it's just a lazy so body position. He might get away with this with, okay, so with actually nothing. Yeah, it's onto his own player, yeah. 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 Into his own player. So what's the deal there if you tuck illegally? He did catch his own player. I mean, he is flirting with danger there, Johnny. But his own player is going to be raging, isn't he? He's got a shoulder in the back. But look, he's got away with it. Awful technique. I mean, if you're watching that at home, you're listening to us, do not clear out like that. You wrap your shoulder you bind you come in properly at a decent height he's got away with it and he's lucky that he hasn't made contact with a Scottish mm. player in any shape or form because that is clearly illegal well that Calling. is yeah that could have gone the other way but Genj caught his own player so it's no foul play England do still have the chance to go for goal amid all this City taking the lead at Bournemouth as John was telling us over on Sports Extra by the way for commentary of Bournemouth, Manchester City, George Ford to cut the gap to eight, he's done just that Scotland 24, England 16 
Three points to three points. OK, maybe not what I would have done in that position, Johnny, but, uh, you know. I also would have been inclined to go to the corner. Their line-out has been good. Oh, fumble in the backfield by England. Oh, my days. Well, I wonder if the ball <laughs> may have gone back with the sideways then bounced forward, but it looks awful. Sam Underhill may be in the backfield, and that's clever from Scotland. They went way before England was set. George Martin it was, number 19. He's made a big impact since coming on. And Yeah, how what many, do you think? How many times do we, do we talk about your, your next job or your the basics, set-piece basics, scrum, line-out, kickoffs? And you get into the game, you get towards eight points in a tough encounter away from home. What's your next job? Oh, the coaches are banging their desk. They're pulling their hair out. And the psychology, the momentum swing as well. We've just spoken about if you were confident for England, you would have kicked to that corner. You'd have tried to squeeze. You've squeaked the three points. But to convert them properly, as we talk about in any sort of try conversion or penalty, your exit is your follow through. How do you get out of your red zone and get back to zero? Now England, yes, they chipped away the three points, but straight back into mm. defending on their 10 metre line, not easy. And it happened so quick. Obviously, Russell saw England not set, and that's where England's got to be sharper. But Ben Russell was sharp as ever. The scrum goes down 24 16, 51. Minutes gone. Remember, earlier Ireland went three from three. If England lose today, only Ireland can win the Grand Slam. 31-7 winners over Wales in Dublin. Reaction to that on the Rugby Union Daily podcast, which is out tonight. Also, the Test Match special podcast. England in a good position that fourth test. Three Indian wickets to take. Decent-sized lead for England as well. Fascinating test series against India all the news and reaction on the TMS podcast which is out now flower of Scotland Johnny BT can Scotland score next and maybe put this game to bed well, this is exactly where England had their scrum that they scored in the first period through Furbank Scotland with a full back line stacked what can they prove White out to Redpath who's the first receiver England rushed up but Redpath didn't throw the pass. White now comes to the right. Russell gets it away. Then it's been knocked on. No, it hasn't. Van der Merwe gathered it and somehow got it out to Stain. I don't know how he did that, Duan Van der Merwe. Looked for all the world like he was going to lose the ball, but he kept control of it. And Scotland still have it as Schumann takes it from White. Eight points in and at Murrayfield. As Scotland attack and then they knock on and both sides. The handling errors have let them down and England hold on. Scotland cannot Don't score like that, again. that I'll, try I'll that would have put them 13 at least clear. It stays as an eight-point gap, 53 minutes gone. Scotland 24, England 16. Does anyone think that Dwan van der Merwe is up for this game or what? I mean, he's, he's, man of, he's player of the match and there's only 52 minutes gone. He's absolutely everywhere. Making tackles, scoring tries bumping balls and sprinting after it before he hits the deck um, I mean he sort of epitomises that sort of Scottish terrier mentality but just so controlled at the moment um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a tough ask for England this you really can sense it however if anyone on that England side gets just gets to grip with the game strategically you never know. And what would you, you like, never what, know? What would you look you just teed up nicely? What would you like to see them do differently or what do they have to change? Again, not much with the eight points in the game. What do they have to do to win this game and take I, the game to Scotland? I, I think the what Ben Spencer did when he first came on, he hit a brilliant box kick. Just, you know, competing to win the ball, get it a little bit loose on the charge oh and, and keep it a little bit more simple. England get the scrum go. penalty. Will their scrum be able to bail them out of this? There is a long way to go. Scotland 24, England 16. Chris Ashton on the touchline. What's the mood down there? It looks like changes could be coming. Cunningham South is down here. Bayer and Boso too. I think that's what's needed. I know Johnny was asking Dorster, what do England need to do? I think you need to bring some boys off the bench and just have a new look at it just as we saw the impact that Ben Spencer and George Martin made straight away that's what you can get from these inexperienced players on the bench no fear approach come into the game and see what they can offer just to have a different approach from what we're seeing right now thanks Ashley.
We're just getting clarity, but it looks as if that is Scotland's first hat trick against England in the Championship. Duan van der Merwe has written his name into the history books, and he has got five in two games in this fixture. Scotland 24, England 16 as Maritoje wins it at the front of the line-out and England mauled. So they've gone scrum to maul and it's just their best route back into this game. Therefore, England, Ben Earl plays at dummy half and sends it out to Underhill. 40 metres out, now 30 as England make another little burst. Ben Spencer comes to the right. Maritoje as England stick it up the guts and go a little bit route one. They trail by eight, but loads of time left. 25 minutes as Scotland looking to win four in a row in the championship for the first time since the 1890s. Extraordinary history at stake for Scotland. As George Martin drives on for England, who are almost up to 22. Spencer's kick is charged, then Spencer knocks on. And referee Andrew Brace gives a penalty to Scotland as England hold on. And when they go to the faces, they gradually run out of ideas, don't they, England? And Scotland at the penalty and a chance to go back into English territory. This is my worry for England. That's why I asked you the question, Doss. I think that when England get to multi-phase, at a starting point, they're very good. Their launch is decent, their mall's decent, they're generating goal forward, they're powerful runners, but they look flat. Once they get to multi-phase, they don't look like they know each other. After nine, there's a flat line of English jerseys that don't really look like they're playing together, and it is very strange to watch. And there's another case in point. Flat line, no real solutions. What's he do? Like he's trying to kick it through were, traffic. It's impossible. You're trying to find these solutions that don't any exist. Ta- any team worth their salt at the moment, they get a driving line out like that and they break out. Quick rut break out again. It's got to be on for the back line to be able. Surely you would fancy your chances of a back line to go up against the disjointed back line on the back foot who have just lost 15 metres. And yet England went for the pick and go and you know go for that little sort of one out runner. Now the that might well be effective once or twice but you've got to identify when the time is to go that little bit wider and England are just a little bit narrow in their their thinking at the moment Ewan Ashman is on at hooker for Scotland who again win good line out ball Scott Cummins and Ashman peels away tackled by Genge plenty of replacements coming into the fray Will Stewart's on for Dan Cole Chandler Cunningham South is on, but great carry. Jack Dempsey almost up to the 22. England come flooding through, potentially off their feet, but play on, says the referee. Scotland win a penalty. They can extend their lead to 11 as Russell goes deep to Redpath over on the far touchline. Redpath kicks. That looks clever, but might just run out of play. Oh, we're coming back for a penalty. Scotland penalty. England offside. Russell can kick this with his eyes shut. Yeah, and will. And will, probably. Just to show that he can do it. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, straight in front. 23 metres out, boom, three points. Cancel, cancel out the previous three from England. And that is the right decision, no question. The difference, though, in in the, the, the speed and intensity of when... Scotland had the advantage to play. You thought, oh, 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 this, oh my goodness, Scotland's going to score a try here. Whereas, you know, England, when they get an opportunity to win a turnover, it's as if, you know, all the engines shut down and it's right, regroup, we'll take the three and, you know, we won't go for the seven. Is it there is a very. There's a there's a nuance that's that's uh, that's the difference between between the sides at the moment. Well, Scotland are are going to go 11 clear if, if Russell can kick this it's straight in front yep eyes shut straight through Scotland 27 Scotland 16 not yet an hour played for Johnny Beatty Scotland of England right where they want them they do they do I'm not going to get ahead of myself and say this in the bag because there's a lot of rugby to be played but Scotland looking comfortable looking hungry there's England at the minute coming up short a little bit with the arrows and allowing Scotland easy points that can all change. Brilliant, brilliantly taken at the restart by the Scots, who have scored three tries to England's one. Duan van der Merwe started the day four tries behind Stuart Hogg's 27 record for Scotland. He's up to 26 now. Gets a fourth, and what an afternoon he'll have had. Already it's been incredible. Three tries in the Calcutta Cup. George Ford is going to send up a spiral bomb. That is a, a nasty one for Kinghorn. He comes forward and takes it regally. In total control. Class work from Blair Kinghorn. And Scotland just have to be sensible now, don't they? 
as Finn Russell clears down the field. George Ford scampers in the backfield. He's got Furbank to his right. He will kick himself into the dark Murrayfield air. As Freeman goes up, it's loose. It's in the hands of Scotland. Scotland winning all of those little 50-50s. Back to Russell. He's seen some space behind Daly. But Daly is nicely positioned as Carl Stain rushed up. What's Daly got? Can he get round Stain? Yes, he can, actually. And he goes inside to Oli Lawrence. Will the game start a break up at Murrayfield on five live? Almost an hour gone. Scotland 27, England 16. As Will Stewart drives over the halfway line. And... And Ben Spencer, Matt Dawson will kick. Do you see anything no, in this England side for them to come back from this so, deficit? Yeah, I, I do. I don't think it's done by any stretch. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's a good challenge. Could be a little bit scrappy. But England have got territory and should squeeze Scotland now and not let them out cheaply. Blair Kinghorn, though, has taken a couple of really good balls from fullback. Back in the side, the Toulouse man. Knee injury kept him out of rounds one and two. But no question when back fit, Gregor Townsend is going to thrust him into the Calcutta Cup. Furbank comes forward and he's lost it. Scotland were all over that Scotland. ball. But it's back on the English side. Martin yeah, has it. Advantage. Ford is going to kick. And Cunningham yeah, South chases it. after it. So too Daly. Kinghorn yeah, then knocks it on and England do regain. Right. So England have it on the 10 metre line no, near the touchline. Just in front of Chris Ashton, yeah. who's our touchline reporter, and will be with Ashley shortly. Hour gone at Murrayfield. Scotland 27, England 16. We'll be at Bournemouth City at the conclusion of the Calcutta Cup. That's over on Sports Extra if you want the football. As Cunningham South drives over the 10 metre line. Now Ford puts a bit of pace on it and finds Ben Earl who Stay makes eight. a couple of metres. Do England have that cutting edge? Will Stewart from Ben Spencer, but he's been robbed of the ball. Scotland go to kick it downfield, it's charged. Kinghorn then has it, he hurls it out to Russell. There's loads of space, and Russell sees it, and the game is breaking up a bit. As Daly goes back, but he's pegged inside his 22, and he's going to have to kick. He'll go long rather than to touch. It does go out of play, though, and Scotland have a big territorial gain, and they have a line out on the 10-metre line, Johnny Beatty. The line they do, England. and England... Also, it has to be said they look the most comfortable when they just remove the rugby from the equation and they stick the ball in the air that seems to be their best way of getting change earning go forward winning 50 50s because it just looks a little bit turgid a little bit slow when they have ball in hand i'm just trying to work out i'm just thinking about where england are attacking and it's 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 mostly off nine it might sometimes be a little short ball off nine it might be slightly wider but I've not seen any big runners going into the midfield I've not seen any big runners going off Slade or and I, and I find that really really strange that it's very one dimensional um, from an England attack it needs to be a little bit wider but you just got to find a way to do it well that's a big change Chris Ashton on the touchline Joe Marler on for Ellis Gens, that's perhaps expected on 61 minutes, but George Ford off, and Finn Smith on, and also in front of you, Emmanuel Feywaboso is coming on too. Yeah, he's been stripped for about five, six minutes when he's been up and down, up and down. It just, it gives us a different dimension. Like Finn, Finn Smith has never been out here. He doesn't know what to expect. It doesn't matter to him really how many points down they are. He wants to come out here with a different point of view and try and get England back into this game. I think the breakdown has been dominated by Scotland. So England haven't been able to get any sort of speed of ball into their attacks. The, Scotland have been so good at slowing it up. Well, what a moment for Smith and Faye Wabosa who weren't brought off the bench against... No. Wales, but they are on with 20 just under to play in the Calcutta Cup, which Scotland lead convincingly. Scotland 27, England 16. It's a mess of a ruck as Andy Christie carried it in off the line out. Henry Slade, by the way, who was the man who came off for Faye with Boso. So I think Dorse, Tommy Freeman goes into the midfield. Yeah, Freeman goes to 13. Scotland have it on the 10 metre line. They kick and Furbank scampers round and he's trying to take on a few Scots. He's almost got away and he's through George Furbank and he gets though he doesn't get the offload away. Kind of sums England up. A bright break from Furbank, but it just won't go to hand. Their skills letting them down. Finn Smith under pressure. Spencer to Stewart. 
Okay, onside, please. With 18 minutes to go, 11 points. And the deficit as Spencer repairs the kick. And that was another good carry from Will Stewart. Where's the next carry? But they just know. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a static truck up with the ruck or they make five yards England are always going to kick that ball away and there you go there's the answer Scotland can counter and Scotland have confidence and Russell is starting to see things but Finn Smith is alert to it and he gathers Russell's kick and looks for touch and it will go out of play it's a good kick from Finn Smith but Johnny Scotland still won't mind that they've got the scoreboard completely in their control at 27-16 the clock is ticking in their control they're not forced to play they'll be happy with how things are going the change now and again this is reminiscent for me of when I played for Scotland it was you know what individuals can step up you see Ashley on the touchline can he provoke something can he create something but England as a setup, as a unit need to change something something has to be more dynamic about the way they approach this game if they're going to create some points because it's been a tough 20 minute period for them this second half has not been easy and Scotland are kind of cruising George Horn for Ben White, Andy Christie. Good line-out ball for Scotland, who are on their own 10-metre line, but they're looking composed and relaxed. Russell just strolling behind the ruck here after a good carry from Jack Dempsey. Horn now goes out, another carry. Scott Cummins, the tackle coming in by the England forwards, but... Last feet. Russell and Scotland just taking their time. Okay, 16 contest. and a half minutes to go. Five live sport from the BBC. BBC Sounds. Contest over there now. Take it with you wherever you go on the app. As England are in, oh, they're in trouble there through Jamie George loses the kick, but George Furbank is back, and then Scotland are all over Furbank. It's a Mauls. This could end up being a Scotland scrum, though Furbank has got it to ground. And Ben Earl has a little dummy. Can Earl spark something for England? Penalty Scotland though, England off their feet, they flop over the ball and Russell can take this gap out even further. Again, this I think it just illustrates the point I tried to make, you're playing from deep, you're on the back foot, balls guddled, you've got Ben Earl again off in isolation, trying to create something from nothing, there's no cohesive nature to the way England are trying to play, that is a pick and go on the back foot, trying to create something for his team, it looks a little bit desperate and he just creates that space between himself and his support. The ball is coughed up, great work on the deck by Scotland. They've just been a little bit quicker to the game, they've managed it well and they just look more together. I think that's the point I'm trying to make for England is a little bit lost. It's lonely. It is so lonely out there when you're in this position and England are going to feel that they're not getting any of the decisions and the bounce of the ball's not going their way and everything's going to be rattling through your mind. You're away from home. You can't hear any England fans. You can, all you can hear is Scotland fans, a, a cheer on the penalty. You, you're looking around for you know who's going to get this team together and it's a tough, tough place to be. But players have got to step up. There's plenty of caps out there, Chris. They need to step up. Finn Russell then for 30-16. Of course, he's kicked it. Straight through. Listen to Murrayfield. Scotland 30, England 16, another Russell penalty, Johnny Beatty nods approvingly, the gap is 14, you're still grimacing Johnny. Oh mate, I just don't want to jinx it, England now they need two converted tries to tie this game up and we've seen these fixtures in the past, we know what they can throw at us and here we have England, they've recovered the kickoff. They have through a toe Jay, now Spencer, I think if one man's going to do something okay. to sparking there might be Ben Earl with the ball in hand now Spencer out to Smith driven on by Martin in centre field for England but do they have that cutting edge we often ask Furbank Tackle. throws a dummy Scotland. Scotland. and he sets it up England Never are only 10 out and they come to the left they were both so what a try and England are back in it there's that spark and it's a first test try for Emmanuel they were both so. yeah they've been attacking those short sides we've spoken about it sweeping right to left last second fail with Oso using his pace those who know and see him week in week out have been talking about his ability to to step and move and break tackles he was rocketing flat ball on the line skidded through from 10 meters out lovely timing of the run there we go there's a shot in the arm for England and a great little piece of work as well on the deck Ben Spencer just does enough to interest Cam Redpath holds his attention long enough that allows the space 
And again, we've talked about that individuality. A spark, there's your answer. Created something from absolutely nothing, bouncing down the short side. And this conversion now, absolutely crucial. Got to kick it, hasn't he, Johnny? 30-21, Finn Smith. First test point, he's hit the post. The gap's at nine. Russell hasn't missed a day. Finn Smith could have taken England to within a converted try. Either way, they'll need two scores if they're going to have this miracle comeback. Scotland 30, England 21. Calcutta Cup still alive, Matt yeah, Dawson. Big, big kick. Shame that really important kick to be within seven. It just changes the dynamic of both sides for Scotland. Imagine coming back to the halfway and thinking, oh my goodness me, it's seven points. There's just a little bit more leeway. Ben Hull takes it. He will keep going to the last hour. One of England's better performers over the last six months or so. Breakthrough at the World Cup, but... At the moment, his efforts in a losing cause. 12 minutes to go. Theo down on for Jamie George. So Steve Borthwick has emptied his bench. All the rookies are on as they try and wrestle the Calcutta Cup, which at the moment is in a, in a vice-like Scottish grip. And they have a line-out not far away from the 22. Scotland line-out, 30-odd metres out. They still have a very healthy nine-point lead. Got it. And it, England have got, got to throw a bit of caution to the wind here. They've got a challenge. There's the line out. They've got to try and get up. They've got to disrupt. They've got to do something. I mean, that's easy ball for Scotland. Well, Atoje came through, but Ashman peeled away, ran into Cunningham South. We'll get the view of Ashley on the touchline shortly as England empty their bench. But let's go to the Vitality halftime at Bournemouth, John Akers. Bournemouth nil, Manchester City one, Manchester City in complete control. Phil Foden with the goal, a ball over the top for Haaland, shot save, Foden on the overlap and just tucked it into an empty net. Bournemouth nil, Man City one. Cheers, John, that's over on Sports Extra, big moment here. We're at that stage of the Test match, aren't we, guys, where every moment could be huge. Ashley, your view of that on the touchline. Scotland crossing, England penalty, and Finn Smith takes England fairly deep into Scottish territory now. Yeah, there's still, still 11 minutes left. There's loads of time. If only Steve would have listened to me on 45 and got <laughs> the boys on. That's what I'm, exactly what Fabian Boso did is what I anticipated happening. Some a player coming onto the pitch, full of confidence, doesn't know the rules out here, wants to come out and put his own imprint onto the game. He had no right to be anywhere near the ball and hit a line like he did and score a try. That is what we needed. I just hope there's enough time left for them to have a proper impact. Scotland 30, England 21, Murrayfield expected, anticipating a fourth straight Calcutta Cup. They're 10 minutes away, Scotland, from doing that. England, though, on the attack on the 22 as Spencer goes to Lawrence. Bathman to Bathman, 22, Spencer to Atoje, who's had a decent game and he carries, but good physicality on the game line, Jack Dempsey, who wants the mall, I think he might got to have the mall, Atoje's on the floor, it's going to be a Scotland scrum here, brilliant work, Jack Dempsey, great physicality from the Scots on the game line, they win the scrum, and a couple of Scots are punching the air on their feet, holding their beers triumphantly in their hands. But again, we have to talk about how that is created. That is talked about England being blunt okay, go, with their attack. Go, they've gone two phases and they've got lost. They've come around the corner. Itoji's been asked to punch the ball up by Finn Smith. He's come around kind of ponderously because nobody's really sure what their shape is, what they're meant to be doing. And he's been held up. Great work by Jack Dempsey, don't get me wrong, but we're used to seeing better from England. Historically, with ball, they're difficult to stop there. Scottish defence, yes, blue jerseys there, bodies on the line, yeah, but simple stuff. Very quickly, Finn, Finn Smith has got to get a grip of this thing. He's got to be the general. This is not about, you know, taking your first cap at Murrayfield. This is, this is about getting a grip of the game. He has got to boss the forwards into that position. The scrum claps, but the referee, Andrew Brace, was happy. Russell kicks, flower of Scotland. has been a constant soundtrack this second half. Furbank in the backfield, good tackle coming in by Scotland who've won the ball England keep coughing it up and with eight and a half minutes to go Scotland have it on the halfway line as Christie carries nine points the gap there might be numbers for Scotland to the left they go Cam Redpar throws a dummy his break sparked the hat-trick drive for Van der Merwe Russell now he'll look to prod the ball through Marla then knocked it on as he tried to charge and that will be a scrum to Scotland no advantage 
And the scrum will be around about the 10 metre line as the clock ticks and ticks and ticks. Johnny Beatty, eight minutes to go now, nine points the gap. In Scottish favour, again, this is the danger. Nearly there, a charge down, another opportunity from nothing. That's the danger when you're Scotland, you know you don't have to play with the ball. You want to stick in in their own half, but Finn Russell, they're looking to kick through traffic. It's always so dangerous. Luckily, Scotland get the ball back. It's a scrum for them after the knock-on by Joe Marler. But eight minutes left in this game, Matt Dawson. I think they've got what it takes to do it. What do you reckon? Well, we, we spoke about uh, a couple of times when we were on air about the benches and who who has the most effective bench. We thought that Scotland might be in the lead going into this sort of the final knock-ins of this game. Um, it, right now, with eight minutes to go, within the next three or four minutes, England get an opportunity and score, then obviously we are game on. However, Ben Spencer, Ben Smith have got to grasp the nettle. They have got to boss it, like they've just seen fail with Oso, boss it. They have not got to worry about what's been going on in the camp and what Steve Balfrit wants you to do. Get out there and play the way that you know can win you the game whether you're at Northampton or you're at Bath you're top of the league how are you going to win this game how are you going to score a try from this in these next three or four minutes that's all that I want from those two individuals nine and ten have got a boss this he will make a decision guys okay big scrum 10 metre line inside the Scotland half but if you're Scotland you've been here before you've won the last three there won't be those kind of that, that frenetic feeling if you've not won for ages you might get nine points up eight minutes to go Johnny Scotland have been here before they'll be super calm out there Look, there shouldn't be nerves there's eight minutes and Scotland now know they don't have to play anything out of their third I expect this ball to be kicked straight down into English 22 Scotland do not have to do anything apart from stay out of their third of the field right now so territory absolutely okay, step to me, please. crucial and they just have to close this game out smartly and for force England to generate something that they haven't looked like creating consistently through the game and pull two scores out the bag and still the scrum takes its time and yeah, we were half an hour, hour earlier Scotland may want to speed things up get their backs into the game but they will not mind one bit will they Matt Dawson another minute's gone out of the clock as we wait for this scrum yeah perfect Finn Russell strolling around and they get a free kick, Scotland. Yeah, taking his time. It looked like he had, you know, just Don't go ahead on having, a, having a quick check of the nose. It looked like he was picking his nose, to be perfectly honest. He didn't even look particularly interested in the game because he knew he wasn't going to get it. It was as if he knew, and he's not even taking a kick, I don't think, into touch. He's cruising. Scotland have this nine-point lead and time is running out for England. That's a horrible ball for Faber Bosa, but he's got it. And he's almost got away, the try scorer. Can England go from 60-odd metres? Joe Marler will carry. He trucks it up. Therefore, Ben okay, Spencer, but it looks like the ball is slow. Oh, and he's he's got to go quicker, Chris. He's going it? to the boot, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He's got to go quicker than that. It's, no, it's half-decent carry from uh, Joe Marler. And he's just wasting time. So is anyone just going to tell them that they have got the nine points to drift? get a shift on well they've got to win this ball back and I think they might have yes that's why they kicked to get it back Finn Smith then hurls it out to Furbank but Scotland a well matched in defence here Lawrence out to Freeman that might be a touch high but the referee was brilliantly positioned and was happy England almost up to the halfway Ben Earl he thunders into a couple of Scots including Miller Mills and Lawrence, he's going to go to the boot again Spencer painful guys no. England know they get a lot of ball back but they, they can't afford to give possession away no, so the kick's got to be perfect as Spencer prods it up Daly's a little bit ponderous after that and that's meat and drink for King Horn you're going to kick at this stage of the game you've absolutely got to win it back and Scotland have it through Cummings it's Ben Healy come on I think Johnny isn't he and, so, and uh it's on for Cam Redpath, went off clutching, I think yeah. he looked like no. he burst his nose. So Finn Russell may have gone to centre, it's all happening in the final six minutes of this game. Finn Smith under, he knocks it on, and that could well be that. Finn Smith was under no pressure, and what does Scotland do? Out from Horn, there's the cross pass from Russell, trying to expose Faye with Boso. 
The advantage will be over though because it was just the knock on of Faye with Boso. Yeah, does look dangerous every time he runs with the ball. There might be numbers to the left. It's offside against Scotland. So England have a chance here, but they need to score twice. They, they're nine points in at that missed Finn Smith conversion. Means the converted try doesn't get them out of jail. The infu- this is a Scott. I, I get infuriated watching them because they generate quick ball. There's something. They then slow down their own ball, even with a penalty advantage. And I, I get it. Their rugby is governed by data-driven, almost sort of money ball stuff. But come on, throw something into the game. Throw caution to the wind. Uh, it, it's, it's exactly the same as uh, Ben Spencer is playing in exactly the same manner that Danny Kerr would play when he would come on, which is completely different to how he plays his game for his club. Completely different. Uh, and I, I, I can only think that this is yeah, coming from the no. coaches. This is the messaging. You know, go through a phase, box wait, kick, wait. let's get the ball back. Chesham at the tail. Spencer, do England have it in their locker to go from 30 and force a thrilling finale. Finn Smith throws a dummy almost wrapped up. See? Big welcome to Test Rugby this for Finn Smith. Out the back, England are quite tight, but Lawrence go oh, Lawrence throws a wild pass. And England look beaten out there. Ben Earl watches it dribble into touch. And look at Murrayfield. Scott's a cock a hoop all around us. They know they're on the verge of a four Calcutta Cup win in a row to rival the 70s and then back to the 1890s the last time Scotland won four in a row in the championship Chris Aston on the touchline you saw that pass from Lawrence England just start to panic yeah I think that the part of the problem is what the boys are just talking about there is why are they not playing why are they slowing it down to kick because they, they probably don't they're not practicing it they're not practicing being in that situation in training they're just you don't go into a a game like this planning on being seven, eight, nine points down with five minutes to go and playing from your own half that will never be in Steve's thinking so that's why they're doing that and they're the game dominated them all Scotland are running riot great mall Scotland England have ripped it through a toe Jay and they have it but England simply have to play don't they it's slow for Spencer and I think Earl's just going to carry it up they've got to look to go wide Finn Smith does go wide Daly's off his wing throws a Hail Mary out to Freeman Freeman is dumped and Scotland are swarming all over England. Ollie Lawrence and England start to despair. Nine points in it. There are two and a bit minutes to go at Murrayfield on five live. Scotland on the verge of history. They get the penalty, but they've got to go. They haven't got time. They're going to kick the touch. He just has to lamp it now, does Smith. Nine points, and there are two scores for England. Just get up and whack it, Finn. Come on. It, it, I mean, listen, we cannot, we can't underestimate, you, the heads are complete mush at the moment. England have put so much effort and energy into the, it has been incredibly physical. There was a yellow card being thrown out here, Chris. Yellow card for Oh, Vandermeer, but maybe he was blocking or something. No, it was the oh, tip tackle. Oh, the, the, the tackle. tip tackle. The initial, on, the initial penalty was for the tip tackle. The TMOs referred it as a yellow. He's gone past the horizontal, but he's coming off the hero's welcome. <laughs> Incredibly. <laughs> Imagine getting that reaction to a yellow card. So it means that Vandermeer gets his moment to soak up the Murrayfield adoration and how he deserves it. One of the great Six Nations hat tricks. That'll go down in Scottish rugby folklore forever, as will this win if Scotland see it out and they are 90 seconds away. Don't know what the stoppage is for, but England are waiting to throw it into the line out. And look, if you're talking positively from an England point of view, Matt Dawson, if they try and take a three, then have a go to score a try, because just going through the phases will, will eat up the clock as they win it at the front. Yeah, it's, po- it's points. Let's get, I mean, even a quick drop goal if it allows to then regroup and have 30 seconds at it England have a minute and 10 seconds and they simply have to score Scotland know they are there and it's a scrum to Scotland as England claps them all and that is that and Scotland can feel the history and again Scottish fans to their feet it's Ewan Ashman that comes up with a turnover, another held up with a decent contact. 
But boys, it goes back to my point. That's England on second phase. Second phase, they try and come around the corner. No solution. That's from half. You're forced to pick and go. There's just nothing coming from this England side and Scotland defensively have lapped it up. Well, these are the corporate seats in front of us and they're all on their feet. So all around the stadium, Scottish men, women and children are jumping for joy. They know it is done. 35 seconds to go and there simply is not time, Matt Dawson, for England to score twice. Scotland have to win the scrum, go through a couple of phases and then soak up the Murrayfield crowd. Yeah, I mean, th there isn't time, and unfortunately, there isn't the uh, the wherewithal, <laughs> the wherewithal to score nine points uh, in that time at the moment. There, uh, there haven't been the opportunities other than the uh, Bayer Wabosa try. England have looked lacklustre. They've looked disjointed, um, which is such a shame because in the first five or six minutes. We saw a new England. We saw the dawn of a new England. And then it, it's as soon as Scotland had worked them out, they've been rampant. Listen to this. You're just holding your microphone up, Johnny Beatty, to lap it all up. Oh, Scotland 30, England 21. The clock is dead. One phase, one kick. It's got to be Finn, hasn't it? The ball goes back to Finn Russell. Of course it's Finn Russell. More Calcutta Cup history for Scotland. Four in a row now. It's not been done in the Championship since the 1890s. The days of the horse and cart. And it's their racing car, Duan van der Merwe, and his three stunning tries. And it's Scotland once again, whose vice-like grip on this Calcutta Cup simply will not be relinquished. Scotland 30, England 21, the Scotland flags fly proudly around Murrayfield, and they've done it once more. I, I think Johnny Beattie should go first. That's a, a magnificent win for the Scots, so how are you feeling? Just proud. I think the weird thing is as well, when you've been part of these fixtures and you sit back and you understand the context of how small a rugby nation we really are and how a bit of organisation, some decent players and some togetherness can go such a long way. Oh, we're playing against England, right? The, the scale of what we're playing against, the volume of players and people that you have playing in the game in your country, the number of professional teams, the amount of players you have at your disposal and the fact that this is now four back-to-back. It is absolutely incredible that Scotland can knock this together. And that's why I'm proud of proud of the coaching staff, the setup, Scottish rugby, the players that are part of that group. We have effectively 65 people to choose from. And put that together and we can keep the Calcutta Cup, Calcutta Cup away from an English side and away from a nation that is a superpower on the world stage and therefore incredible. Look at this scene, guys. Scots dancing for joy. They've been here a fair bit in this fixture celebrating a Calcutta Cup triumph for four in a row it's uncharted waters and they're punching the air the Scottish fans all around us Gregor Townsend just walked behind a grin on his face we'll grab a word with Townsend shortly Chris Aston on the touchline painting the scene down there as Scotland win it again yeah you can really see the disappointment disappointment on the English lads faces they really expected more from this but Scotland were too good England I, Past 15, 20 minutes in this game, they didn't really fire a shot and look at ever winning the game beyond 20 minutes. And that's probably a lot down to the experience of the Scotland team and the connections that they have in playing together for so long and them being such a good team. But the question's got to be, where, where do England go next? Do they now move on with players? Do they bring the younger great players in and give them more of a chance in the next few, next few games? Yeah, plenty of food for thought for Steve Borthwick. We will speak to Steve Borth and we'll get some reaction. All that reaction will be on Five Live later and the Rugby Union Daily podcast. Where England go from here is a good question, but Matt Dawson, Scotland's day again. Yeah, and, and a tremendous victory. Uh, uh, if anything, I think uh, the, the score slightly flatters England to be within nine points of Scotland after that performance. Um, yeah, England, wow, from... Uh, 
have they got some work to do because next up they've got you know the the form team in the world in Ireland then they've got to play France there's uh, there's some looking in the mirror to be had I think for England because some some of it was scintillating but then it turned into you know some of it was fairly abject second half on the way of Bournemouth we're going to be there with Ali Bruce Ball any moment now but Johnny B to the last word must go to you as we seeing Duan van der Merwe interviewed unsurprisingly the hat-trick hero is the player of the match he was absolutely phenomenal and I think just for the Scottish side and for Scottish rugby now this was boom or bust you've now got a Scottish side that can go on and challenge for a triple crown in the first time I don't know how long and it sets up an almighty last two rounds against Ireland and Dublin which is a shootout now for the championship if Scotland can get the job done against Italy so exciting times and a wonderful bounce back from Scotland right loads more to come on the Rugby Union Daily reaction through the night on 5 Live but second half Premier League Bournemouth Manchester City commentary now with Franny Benali and Ali Bruce Ball Ali Thank you, Chris. Bournemouth nil, Manchester City 1 here at the Vitality Stadium. We have a glorious, bright, glowing full moon shining in the night sky above us on the south coast. And Manchester City ahead. If they win the game, there'll be a point behind Liverpool at the top of the Premier League table uh, tonight. They're in the white shirts, dark red shorts, white socks, playing from left to right in this second half towards the Ted McDougall stand. Kirkes makes a block for Bournemouth. He's gone down hurt. Play continues, though, with Solanke on the ball just inside his own half. Low curling pass away to the right. Kirkes is slowly dragging himself to his feet. May have been slightly winded there, but he's OK. Back up and playing. Lewis Cook lofted ball down the right. Semenyo stretches out. The left leg controls it, runs at the City defenders, up to the corner of the Manchester City penalty area, and then decides just to lay the ball back here. And Zabanyi, the Ukrainian, comes across to his fellow centre-back, Senesi. Straight ball up to Christie. Nice little clip round the corner from him. Bournemouth in the black and red vertical stripes, black shorts, black socks with the red tops, playing right underneath the nose of their manager, Andoni Iraiola who stands in the technical area on a chilly night, wrapped up in a big padded coat with his hands in pockets. But then he takes them out to clap them together and encourage his team to further efforts. Ball forward from Zabani. Semenyo in a more central position. Good feet from him. Nice vision as well to find Tavernier on the left-hand side. Kirke supporting run. Chip cross, not a good one, over the bar and behind for a goal kick to Manchester City. Bournemouth nil, Manchester City won, but Franny Benali, as you were just saying on Sports Extra, encouraging start to the second half by the home team. It most definitely is, Ali, isn't it? You know, they finished that first half with the, the positive strike on goal, Edison making the save, but they've started the second half well as well, but that'd be frustrating for Bournemouth, you know, getting into a position where they're just looking for that final bit of quality, the ball into the box, but Kirkhez's cross just drifting behind the crossbar. Um, but it's been a bright start since the second half has started for Bournemouth. They need to capitalise on this play. Here they come again. Kirkhez in a central position, attacking position as well. Slides a pass to his right. Sits up for Clybert. Dipping shot. Edison gets down and saves. And the ball just squirts out from his grasp. But he's able to reach forward and grab it inside the six-yard box. Manchester City's Brazilian goalkeeper, all in green, then comes striding out to the edge of the penalty area. My thanks to John Akers as well for the restorative cup of tea, which is being occasionally slurped during the second half here. I didn't get one, Ali. You didn't, actually. Did you ask for one? <laughs> he or, did, he did. All right. Maybe this is yours. for his expression, though. He did ask me. <laughs> Silver to Haaland. Haaland could be in here, running into the Bournemouth penalty area. Hits the right-footed shot. Zabani did so well. He was knocked to the floor by Haaland's strength, but he didn't give up. He got up again, made the block on the Haaland shot, and it meant that Neto didn't mean to make a save. It's a Manchester City corner. It was good play in the end, wasn't it? Sort of just Zabani sort of getting back to his feet after the initial... Brush off is the best brush way to pro off, probably call it from Haaland. I mean, the strength of the man is just yeah. incredible. I, I would love to be out there playing against him. Would just, you? Yeah, just to see how good he actually is. Yeah, I can tell you why I wouldn't. Uh, here's Foden with the corner from the right into the far post. Defenders and attackers up. Who got the last touch there? Referee Jared Gillett says it came off a Bournemouth player, so that'll be another corner for Manchester City. Phil Foden, the goal scorer, 24th minute of the game. Haaland created it with a really good run, diagonal run, then used that strength, actually, to hold off Sanessi, get his shot away. Neto palmed it into the path of Foden, who's now scored in five successive games 
against Bournemouth. Corner again for Manchester City, in from the left-hand side. Spilt by Neto, scrambling desperately for the ball. Bournemouth managed to get it out of their penalty area, and luckily for them, Clivert is there first. Unluckily for them, Clivert has given it away. Akanji's now putting pressure on Adam Smith. Akanji's won it off Smith. And this could be danger for Bournemouth, but Manchester City just slow it down, get back into the passing rhythm and play the ball to Kovacic. So more reaction being gathered, I'm sure, at Murrayfield. Scotland beating England 30-21. Here's Foden down by the byline. Cut back, comes all the way through to Bernardo Silva. Black and red shirts in front of him. Left-footed drive is blocked by Kirkes and behind for another Manchester City corner. Wonderful bit of football from City there. Just patient build-up to begin with, but Kanji just found a little pass for Foden and he's almost on the, the byline before he cuts the ball back but Haaland had made his run to the near post with no other City players other than Silva Bernardo Silva making the run but they've won a corner Phil Foden hoists his right arm in the air pauses because the referee's blown his whistle and has spotted a little bit of argy-bargy in the six-yard box as the great Bill McLaren used to say which seems very apt on a Six Nations weekend and he of course would have been delighted with a Scotland win over England Foden's corner good delivery on the goal line almost that is headed away by Kirkes Tavernier leaps powerful header from Rodri back to Kovacic Kovacic on the half volley lofts the ball up Solanke is there in the left back position to head it away Bernardo Silva leaps in and nods the ball down to Foden Foden holds off Solanke Plays a pass into the feet of Silva. Silva's cross takes a deflection. Neto's brave there. Dives on the ball. Haaland was hurtling towards him. And Haaland actually graciously leapt out of the way and over the goalkeeper. Nine minutes gone in the second half. Five live in sports extra. Bournemouth nil. Manchester City won with commentary of the League Cup final. Program 5 Live Sport coming live from Wembley tomorrow. Kicks off at 3 o'clock. Semenyo's away down the right-hand side. Nearly finds Solanke. Oh, does find Tavernier. What a miss. The goal was gaping at the far post. Poor contact. Hooks it across the face of goal. And Manchester City have got it away. Clever flick from Foden. Rodri plays it up towards Haaland. And this game suddenly opening up at the start of the second half. What an opportunity for Marcus Tavernier. Oh, what a chance for Bournemouth and Tavernier, especially as you say, Ali. It was a great break down the right-hand side from Semenyo, getting past Nathan Aki. And then his ball across the box. You thought Dominic Sananke was going to be the one getting the touch in on goal, but it fell to Tavernier and he just fluffed his finish a little bit, just scuffing it, not getting a good strike on it, but it certainly brought the home crowd to life. Brilliant from Manchester City, cutting right through the heart of Bournemouth here. Stones driving forward, flicks a little pass to his left. Haaland's lurking at the far post. Nunes rolls a pass to Bernardo Silva. Now Haaland receives it. Ball at his feet, edge of the box. Lays it back to Rodri. Thinking about a first-time thump. Gives it to Foden. Foden working in really tight spaces. Just hits the pass beyond Haaland. But the move up in the middle of the pitch was very simply Edison dribbling out to the edge of the box, rolling a pass into midfield, and City bang-bang like that. They're on top of you. It's when, within two or three passes, it just shows how you go from one end of the pitch to the other and how dangerous they are in that kind of scenario. But... Bournemouth will be kicking themselves. If they've got to get anything from this game, that's the kind of opportunity and chance that they've got to be taking. Franny Benali with us here on Five Live. As I say, rugby reaction still being gathered. Scotland winners in the Calcutta Cup against England. Ireland beating Wales by 31 points to seven. France, Italy tomorrow. Commentary of that one will start online. It kicks off at three o'clock. And then after Sheffield United away to Wolves finishes... Uh, that will switch to Sports Extra for France, Italy. All the reaction in the Rugby Union Daily podcast, all the football reaction, of course, uh, in the Football Daily. And lines now open for 6.06 as well to get your calls in for the phone-in uh, tonight. 08085 909 693. Foden twisting and turning, 25 yards out in a central position, and the pass eventually is made out to the left. Kovacic back to Ake, Rodri wide to Nunes. Mateusz Nunes, a starter for... Manchester City this evening turns strokes a pass to Kovacic Kovacic low ball into the feet of Foden brings it immediately under control holds off Christie back to Kovacic Kovacic to Rodri and Manchester City trying to move the Bournemouth defenders around but they're being forced back to the halfway line here Akanji plays back to Diaz Diaz running across the halfway line chased by Solanke laid off to Ake Diaz again just inside the Bournemouth half on the left now to Nunes, and Foden starting to make a little dart down the inside left channel. Nunes decides not to go that way. Ball is stroked forward to Bernardo Silva. He's under pressure from Kirkes. Bournemouth win it back. Home fans love that. Christie 
Little pass low to his left to Tavernier. Lots of space for Kirkes on the left. The ball rolls in front of him, down by the byline. Back he comes to Tavernier again. Tavernier to Christie. Manchester City now back in numbers. Leading Bournemouth by a goal to nil. And moving within a point of Liverpool at the top of the Premier League table. Arsenal Newcastle, of course, kicks off at 8 o'clock this evening. Updates of that one into 6.06. Little scoop pass from Senesi on the left. Christie plays it across here to Lewis Cook, his central midfield partner. Cook is sitting deep. Gets the ball back again from Adam Smith. Now a diagonal ball from Zabani. Bounces twice in front of Kirkes. And Kanji comes racing back, knocks it out for a throw into Bournemouth. And they take that immediately. Thrown to the feet of Tavernier. Tavernier to Christie. Christie's left-footed cross, takes a deflection. The ball loops up in the air. Header away from Rodri. Cook beats Haaland to the ball. It spins loose. Senesi just scrambles to his left and manages to keep it in play, looks up and sees a load of white shirts in front of him, so Bournemouth recycle and come back central to the halfway line Senesi's curling pass looking for Solanke, he's just got beyond Ruben Diaz here, holding Diaz off good centre forward play, play back to Tavernier strokes the shot wide, goal kick for Manchester City, but more encouragement for Bournemouth, Franny Benali Wonderful passage of play by Bournemouth wasn't it, much better, moving the ball around and it was a great bit of play, Solanke making a little run into the box Receiving the ball, keeping possession, a little layback for Tavernier, but his shot scuffed past the post, but much better from Bournemouth. And the home supporters certainly feeling while the game's still at 1 0, the longer the match goes on, that their side might get something from this game. Still just 1 0 to Manchester City at the moment. The hulking figure of Haaland holds off Senesi. The ball is played to Kovacic. Haaland is sprinting down the middle here, trying to get involved. Nunez crosses over, hit and sliced, and goes behind for a goal kick with Foden. Uh, aimlessly, not aimlessly chasing, but uh, it was a lost cause. He was never going to get there, and Bournemouth get the goal kick. Certainly, just feel that the momentum's just shifted in Bournemouth's favour, don't you? With the chances that they've had the last five or ten minutes, and City, a couple of their passes just going astray, and that cross into the box, typifying sort of how this second half has gone. Really, certainly, Bournemouth the, the better side, a little bit more confident, but need that goal to get back on level terms yeah still trailing by a goal to nil thoughts of Franny Bernali on five like Bernardo Silva nearly pounces inside the Bournemouth half as they try to play out Tavernier can't quite keep the ball in play it's just crossed the touchline in front of Pep Guardiola he gives it the thumbs up to his team and they want to throw in wide on the right they're taking their time Haaland just casually strokes the ball to Akanji looks like Jeremy Doku is getting ready to come on. Now, he had uh, a real hell of a time against Bournemouth earlier in the season. Four assists and a goal, I think it was, in Manchester City's 6-1 win against Bournemouth at the Etihad. So Bournemouth fans won't be pleased to see him getting ready to come onto the field. Stones forward to Haaland, back to Stones, just inside the Manchester City half, across to Silva, brilliantly worked by Manchester City. Now options for John Stones. Curling ball just beyond Haaland. Headed away, Stones will try and get there. Tavernier is back there in the left-back position for Bournemouth. Clears on the turn, up the left-hand touchline it goes, but Manchester City win it back. Again, a big thumbs up 